are we here? <clears throat> Everyone here, everyone can hear me? This is my new computer, first time using it. I haven't made a single video on here yet. I haven't done a single live stream, so hope all is working. And if it's not, let me know early so I can fix it. So what a day for this stock. What a week for this stock, actually. Crazy. Who would have thought a merger happens and everyone was hoping for the moon and looks like we're not at the moon just yet. And I think a lot of people have jumped ship on this one. Um, I don't know if any of you guys watching are in on this one or you're bullish or you're bearish on this one, but I technically have a little bit in this one now. I had some Afria and it converted over to Tilray. I'm having one problem though. My brokerage, Bank of Montreal, up in Canada, where I hold these shares, they don't even have uh, the shares for me yet. So I couldn't buy more on this dip, which I think it could dip more. And I couldn't even sell if I really wanted to. So it's kind of annoying. I heard some of the US brokerages were allowing trading already on this stock. And I'm getting kind of mad about this. So yeah. Who's here? Freddie O. What's up, man? If you guys want to know Tilray, Afria, all that stuff, Freddie provides the update like every day pretty much, at least every two days. Um, and this guy will keep you up to date with all things Tilray, everything you need to know. Every news story, he'll cover it. So I urge you to check out his channel. Would I buy Tilray at these prices? Um, I kind of think it has some more room to go down because um, I'm just gonna put this one up here. here. I don't know, I think it still could technically be overvalued. Some people may think that. so. I don't know, I think it has some room to go down still, but what, how much is it really down? Let's see. Just in the past five days, we're down 15%. It feels like more, it feels like more, but um, that's what it is according to this. For some reason, I think I could see like the 13s at some point. And there's a lot of um, people waiting for legalization or some kind of thing, especially Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer is on tour right now. He's going to cannabis events. He's promoting the fact he wants to do something about this and he's just more promoting it than actually doing it. So we're kind of waiting on this guy to make a change, but I don't know. I think people could be a little bearish on the entire industry right now, just because no one's sure when this stuff will happen. And I've been watching a couple interviews with Biden. Um, he's not going to make a move. It doesn't look like he's going to make a move. Some people suspect that Kamala Harris is going to come in and they're going to Maybe she'll take over by running for president in 2024, and she's going to run on that and use that to get herself voted in. I don't know, though. That's kind of speculation. You bought at the top $25. Ugh, I know it's hard. It's hard when you buy something at the top. I've been there before. How long are you planning to hold? Like, are you okay holding for a long time? Move that over a bit. Why does it say $14 in Robinhood? I'll check. Yeah, maybe this is wrong. Let's re refresh this. I'll check Robin Hood on my phone. Yeah, I feel like it was less today. Yeah, fourteen dollars and twenty cents till rate. Let's check my Apple stocks. I'm probably looking at the wrong one. Come on, Google. Yeah, till. <laughs> This is wrong. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on with my account here. Let's go. Um, what, I, what could I pull up here? I have this one. Um, this is last minute here. I have till right here. Um, this one seems to be correct here on Apple. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a lot worse. So yeah, I think it could go lower than 13. I don't know why I didn't spot that at the beginning. Um, yeah, we're down a lot just today in the last week. Whew, this does not look good. <laughs> down 25 percent. that seems more realistic yeah my bad thanks for spotting that i would have been talking i don't know if someone needs to send google an email they had their numbers wrong google's not up to speed yeah for some reason i could see this going down more um a lot of people on this type of stock they may have bought in during the hype of course right and 
they can't stomach something like this happening. They thought they were going to make quick money and quick money was being made at the beginning of the year. Like there was a lot of hype around a lot of stocks and like it seemed like pretty much any stock was going to be guaranteed money. So I think people went into Tilray assuming some kind of legalization was going to happen. I remember 420 was a catalyst and nothing came out of 420. Um, so I, I have a feeling like people aren't willing to be patient here and maybe people think, oh, I'm going to time the market here and sell and then jump back in when it drops even more. Maybe, I don't know. That's a lot of people think people, like that. They, 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 they want to, they can't stomach seeing their account negative, right? Oh, the one I was looking at was Toronto Stock Exchange. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. So we're in Canadian dollars. That's why I looked at that. So I'm up in Canada right now. I'm used to just Google automating like where I am. And usually I'm in the United States and it's, I'm not used to these Canadian stocks just yet. But yeah, you're right. TSE right there. Um, so yeah, who's still holding right now for a Tilray? Anyone? Uh, Everyone's still hanging on. And how far will you hold? I actually don't don't know if I even would buy at this price. Not because of like the valuation or anything like that. I just think of like the sediment. Like um, people are negative about this one right now. So <laughs> tether. So I don't know. I think it needs to kind of stabilize a little bit. It's like this 6% per day thing is just crazy. Like it's absolutely bonkers and i called my um i called my bank today bank of montreal where i have my canadian brokerage and yeah like i was like hey i can't touch tilray and i can't touch my afria that's in there and they were like oh we're sorry sir we just received the shares today and you're going to be able to get your shares tomorrow when the market opens i'm like it wasn't the merger like the early in the early week it took this long like uh, it kind of it kind of made me mad and i've had some problems with bank of montreal it's just a bank in general so um yeah maybe i'll be switching banks someday but holding forever i sold when i was at a profit bought a little bit when it dropped to 14 17. nice move And keep in mind here that this isn't the only stock that's not doing well. There's a lot of stocks not doing well right now. So it's not specific to just this stock or this sector. This sector though, loves to drop more than the rest though. That's the one thing about this one, but um, that's what you signed up for by buying stocks in this sector. So billionaire Ukrainian crypto trader, Yorick Hunt. Never heard of this guy. Maybe I should look him up. I'm gonna move my computer here. Sorry about the noise. No so I can see these comments right in front of me. I'm working with like multiple computers here. I'm gonna Google this guy that you're talking about here. My mouse is stuck. What is going on with my mouse? Hold on a sec. My mouse wants to trip out during this live stream. Yeah, Peloton, Andrew Wallace. Peloton is on the agenda today. What a wild ride. If anyone was keeping an eye on the after hours, um, it was an insane day. I'm gonna have to delete my mouse here. It's really, I have to disconnect it or something. Sorry about this. Yeah, Peloton, wow. Like after hours, it was like positive and then it went negative and then it went positive again. And then negative, it's like, what is going on? Okay, there, my mouse is back. It doesn't click though. I don't know what's going on. Oh my God, I always have technical difficulties here. One more time. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so Peloton, I, uh, I think like, Look at this, this after hours chart here, it was like up, then down, then way up, and then more up and kind of stabilized. So I don't know if anyone's bullish on Peloton here or not, but um, I like the stock, it's my number one holding. And yesterday, probably the the biggest drop in a single stock in my portfolio I've ever had. So 
I think yesterday it was down about 15% was not good, but um, I have like complete confidence in Peloton, but yeah, buy the dip. I think that the stock market as it is today, it still could go through some issues uh, over the coming months. There's always that inflation um, worry that everyone's scared of right now. Um, I think it'll keep kind of going up and then down, going up and down. So what I'm personally doing, and this is not financial advice, is I'm putting a little less into stocks right now. I'm just kind of putting a little bit at a time, nothing big, um, and just trying to build up that cash a little bit because I have a lot of money in all my positions already, and I'm pretty kind of set in my in my head. I'm like, what happens if there is that big drop and there's the guy from the big short who's like, oh, the thing's going to crash. I'm deleting Twitter because they're making me do it and that whole thing. It's kind of crazy. Um you never know, like the market could really crash more if inflation gets out of control. A lot of the experts say that inflation is fine. It'll be happening temporarily and then it'll drop again, but the stock market doesn't quite buy it just yet and they want more proof. So um, yeah, we'll see. So I'm just kind of saving a little more cash right now, just in case. Now so yeah, so Peloton right now is at, in the post market, 88.75, but I'll uh, zoom. I'm going to change my view here so you can see it all. Yeah, so they're, they're at about 88.75. They haven't cracked $90 yet, but I don't know if there's any uh, Roblox. We'll talk about Roblox in a sec. I don't know if there's any Piton holders, but they. I think they timed this recall like perfectly. Like, I'm not sure they were forced to do the recall yesterday, but I think they knew they were going to have very good earnings and they're like, oh, okay. Uh, we'll release this terrible news. It's going to pack the market, of course. And then we're going to come back with like showing huge growth. And I think they were like 140% up in sales. Um, Roblox is, uh, they're having the earnings next week too. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, Peloton sales up 141% is cycled demand remains strong. So the good thing here is this did not happen to their uh, treadmill line. If it was their treadmill line, then that would not be good. That would not be good for Peloton. But um, I think treadmills, or should I say bike line, sorry, bike line. Um, the treadmills aren't a main, their main revenue. It's obviously good to have that treadmill revenue. I know a couple of people with the treadmill, but, and they actually don't want to give it back. So that's a different story. All the, uh, I was reading the, the forums on Reddit and a lot of uh, users of Peloton are disappointed. They don't want to give their Peloton treadmill back and I don't think they will. So um, the company is going to improve their current design and the ones that they ship out going forward are going to be um, yeah, more safe. So I personally like this company. I think they're they're not seen as a um, an exercise company. They're more of like a software company, a content company. They have your attention like, uh, like an hour a day or an hour and a half per day, whatever you're working out. They have that attention and we're living in an attention economy. And I think over time, they're going to kind of like expand their business. But a lot of people are bearish on Peloton. They think it's a fad. It's a COVID stock. It's all that. So that's, it's kind of a battle right now. So I, I'm holding that one, I think. I might never sell. I just feel like it's a great brand. It's going to turn into a global brand and they're not even operating in like every country yet, not even close. So they have some room for growth, but check the chat. Uh, Roblox, that's a good one. So let's check their stock right now. And there's no Canadian Roblox, I don't think. So we, we won't mix this one up. Yeah, so I don't mind this, honestly. I'm kind of expecting it to kind of keep going down. Just because there's only there hasn't really been a, a quarter where it's been like it's only been this is their first quarter where it's uh, they're releasing earnings as a publicly traded company. Um, a lot of people may even see this one as a as a pandemic stock, so we'll see what happens. But this one is another one that I'm planning on holding long term. I don't really think about it. I don't worry about it. I just know it's in my portfolio, and I slowly add to the position, especially during any dips. So. I hope they have good earnings. I hope they show some good growth. And I think I think they have a chance to. Um, they have to somehow capitalize on the fact that they want to grow their user base age. Like they don't want to just have kids on the platform. And I know they're working on that right now. Wow, 90% return on Ethereum. What are you planning on doing? Just holding long term, never selling? Or are you going to take some, take some profits out? Ethereum has gone mental. 
It's awesome. I'm Canadian. I need to. I need to go to the American dollars. What's a good crypto? Um, those Google. I don't trust this Google. I'm gonna put it in Canadian dollar. Insane. Uh, I saw this article today. J.P. Morgan. Yeah, so they, um, JP Morgan, huge bank, of course, right? They think Ethereum will grow. F oh, no, I got blocked. Let's find out. I might have to go to a different one. I love how this is on Yahoo Sports. <laughs> um, JP Morgan explains why Ethereum is outperforming Bitcoin. Um, I read something today. I don't know. I won't find the article right now, but. JP Morgan, I think they said like Ethereum could like outgrow Bitcoin, like because Bitcoin has kind of gotten so, um, it's just gotten so huge. Uh, where is it? That's Dogecoin under there. I had an article saved. Ethereum. Apparently, like the use case for, for Bitcoin is just not that useful. In this article on Seeking Alpha, they explain the fact that it's been about 12 years of existence of Bitcoin so far, and we haven't really found like a use case for it yet. And I kind of agree. Um, but these type of things are completely new. Like it's going to take some time, right? So I don't know if we should write it off just yet. But um, I heard there's more uses for Ethereum. I'm not the ex expert in cryptocurrencies, but um, I like Ethereum, and it seems to be... Uh, like the NFT thing is all kind of connected through Ethereum or it's run on that, right? Yeah, Palantir stock, it's going, oh, what's up Junebug? It's been a while, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Pacific time time zone, so it's not that late for me. It's I guess the windows aren't open, but the, it's still light out right now. So you can see the sun still. You <laughs> Yeah, so Palantir stock, um, I'm currently in Palantir. Um, one of my friends, Andrew, is actually in the chat. He He's big on Palantir as well. Um, here's this one I saved. I already had the article lined up. Uh, I think this could, they, some people are like, this is going to be a 10x one day, which it very well could be, I think. It just needs some more time. And I think the earnings are coming out next week. Um, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't, I'm thinking this one is a long-term play as well. Like I, I don't have like high expectations. I'm not like hoping it goes perfectly now, but I think just give it some more time in this company. It's just becoming more and more useful. I think their business to business product, it's called Foundry, I believe. Like they're, they're extracting data and finding uses for it. All the data out there. Um, and companies are actually getting a lot of use out of it. I've heard like Airbus is signed up with them, BMW, a lot of big companies are working with them. So I don't know. I think this is a cool company and data is like the new oil data is huge and companies need data to make decisions. So I don't know. I, I, I like, I like, uh, this company. I'm going to keep adding to my position. Yeah, BMW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Palantir BMW. Oh, it's in German. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think there's more and more companies that are going to use their technology. And you just have to be patient with this one. And maybe one day you're going to be like, oh, my God, like, why didn't I buy more at this low price? Partly, I kind of think that it could see like $15 a share. I don't want to be a negative Nancy or like that. But 
I don't know, anything is possible. You can't just assume like all is going to go well when you're investing and you need to just be prepared for anything. So if you believe in a company and it dips, sometimes that's a blessing in disguise. And the skilled people, the ones that actually are successful are the ones that can manage to stomach a dip and take advantage of a dip. And today I, I have a huge position in Peloton, but I decided to add like a couple more shares just because it was a dip. I'm like, why not? And if it dips even further, which it could, um, I don't mind. I, I'll, I'll probably keep adding to that position. But yeah, it's funny. You guys ever use stock twits? It's it's like a stock twits. It's so funny. These like forums, people go crazy. It's like people are fighting each other. There's like bear, everyone's bearish, 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 bearish. This guy, I don't know if he's in this live stream here, but this guy's always always posting on here i don't get how people like i don't know I, I, I'm, I'm i'm more bullish on companies than bearish i don't like look to like promote why a company is so bad unless like, i'm not going to sit on a forum all day i think i made a video about sundial and maybe a couple of you guys have seen that one but um i i decided over time that i f feel like it's more important to find the positives in a company if you don't like one you don't have to invest in it Are you talking, uh, Junebug, are you talking about uh, Palantir? Yeah, so the valuation of Palantir is pretty high. Some people think it's very high. And this company has been around for a, lo a long time. Actually, I'm going to go back to my handy stock chart <laughs> on Apple here because it works. So... Not good, not good looking at this chart. But yeah, even at a $37 billion valuation, a lot of people are like, this is still pretty high valued. So it needs to come down more. And I think it IPO'd around $12, 10, $10. So even, they're not profitable yet, right? They're, I don't think they're profitable yet. And yeah, I, I could see it going down. I don't think it would go lower than this, but people want to be, the second like a company like this with all this hype, proves someone proves it that they're getting things done they're making progress that's when they start popping and look what happened to tesla right everyone was hating on tesla for a while they thought it was just a car company and people started realizing that this is more than a car company this is changing the game and palantir is, is like a unique company they've spent decades building their product and most people can't fully understand it i can't give you the full explanation on how their stuff works but they basically like take massive amounts of data, put it together, package it nicely to help you as a company or you as the government to make decisions. Um, I think it was pretty useful during the pandemic for the United States government. And I think more and more like if one comp, if, if BMW starts using it and it works for them and they're getting results, does that mean Mercedes Benz needs to start using it? And does this come become like the Microsoft office of like data where like every company now has to have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, unless you're an Apple user, but or a Google Docs, I guess. But like you have to have these things, and maybe Palantir becomes that like data company that every big Fortune 500 company needs to stay competitive and make better decisions and not waste money and decide where to invest and all that. So all the data is out there; it's just packaging it together. That's the hard part, and that's why that this company is so interesting. Yeah, a lot of uh, companies and governments will be using their services in five to 10 years from now. So it doesn't really matter what the exact price is now. Yeah. So if you're thinking you're making a quick buck off this one, I think by now, all the people that thought they were, maybe they're out and maybe the ones that are left that realize like I'm holding this one. Just don't think about it, right? Just don't think about it. Not every one of these businesses, these like hype businesses these days, like a select few of them are going to make it and do well, but this is one I believe that has a chance. Yeah, so that, and that's the thing, like one of the most common investment advice is um, invest in what you understand, right? So um, 
Peter Lynch, he's famous for investing in like Dunkin' Donuts, which is like, of course you understand that it's coffee, donuts, you sell food, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that's what he says, invest in what you know. Same with Warren Buffett, he bought like, um, he bought like C's Candy and Dairy Queen and Coca-Cola, Amex, insurance companies, right? So that's what he does. But if you don't understand Palantir enough, then maybe you're not convinced to buy it, right? So, and if you're looking at their, uh, earnings reports and you're like oh they're not making money yet and like this valuation like maybe that's why people are staying away right now like they don't get it they don't need like i have friends that i'm like hey are you in palantir they're like i don't really get it not really interested so that's kind of where they are right now and maybe they need to keep working on their pr um this guy where is alex carp i find like their ceo people might look at him be like um what is he like? Who is this guy? <laughs> like they made this video here. I don't know if this sound. I'm just gonna turn the sound off. But they made this video here, and it's like in a barn, and they highlight like this is where Palantir was founded. Um, this is a historic place for us. It was just kind of weird though. It was just kind of like maybe this like people that don't know Palantir might watch this and be like, what is this company? I don't get it. Like a, so, and they wear like weird clothing brands. I'm like never heard of these ones. Like they these pants. Like it just. Some people might find it odd. Like, shouldn't they be wearing a suit if they're like a, a company? Like they're not wearing, they're at the, they look like they're going to like a track meet. Um, he, this guy's always dressed kind of like this. Not always, but. Yeah, dude from Player One. It's like Freddie O, yeah. Um, he looks like a guy. Do you trust him? <laughs> and people say, do we, should we trust Palantir? They're working with governments. Are they going to screw every, all the people over and they're going to work with governments and like, and that's the thing, right? There's a lot of like risks and there's a lot of headlines with this company still that um, kind of scare people off, I think. But over time, if say you work for a company that has Palantir and you're using it, maybe you become more used to it. And then over time they grow, right? So yeah, it's it's interesting. But I think he's been like the CEO since like the beginning. So there's another guy, co-founder. He's always in interviews, but he like sits in the most like awkward position. I forget his name. I can't, I can't find it right now. I'm not going to spend time finding all that stuff, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think just, I'm just buying, betting on big data and then going from there and just not thinking about it too much. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Brown back to the future. Yeah. Maybe that's what he's trying to be. <laughs> Who here is in Dogecoin? And what do we think about um, SNL? I think it's uh, it's going to be interesting this weekend. And it's cool to like watch SNL live and you can watch the uh, the reaction of the, of the crypto market the exact time because crypto never closes. Are they kind of like CrowdStrike? I think they're a little different. I don't know too much about CrowdStrike. I haven't looked into them too much. They like kind of like secu cyber security stuff. But anyways, yeah, Dogecoin. I don't even know if you guys want to talk about Dogecoin. I could talk about that later. Just let me know. <laughs> Where's the investor area? There's so many companies now. It's like, it's hard to like focus and I don't like having, um, I don't like having too many companies. So I just, I, I, I've seen this one. I've heard about it a lot. Um, I'm sure it's down. I'm sure it's down, but, um, where is this? Investor presentation. So they're more of like, security for like i guess the data and stuff 1.05 billion annual recurring revenue we like recurring revenue so 90 percent of their revenue comes from subscriptions um their revenues are growing their subscriptions are going a lot so that's that's a good sign but what's the valuation i'm gonna have to go back to this wow 41 billion and they're bringing in a billion dollars ish in revenue on an annual basis. They obviously have 8% that's not subscription revenue, but 
Yeah, I've seen this one. I just haven't taken a look at it deep enough. So if anyone knows anything, let me know. So, yo, Chills. So Chills is in my uh, Discord group. He uh, he's a he's a big participator. He gave me like he gave me a tip, um, a stock tip on this one. And I don't know if anyone noticed this, but this when he told me about it, I was like, eh, okay, cool. And I didn't really think about it. Let's go to their. Uh, so PLBY, Playboy Group. So if you're wondering, Playboy, yes, this Playboy, like with the bunny ears and all that. So this stock, he told me about it maybe, wow, this thing is. So he told me about it. It was like around here. He's like, yo, Playboy just came out. I'm like, okay, well, not going to take it seriously. Then it went to like 18 or something. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll put a little bit in. So I put a tiny bit in and the stock Playboy, the magazine company, look at this stock. It was at like $10 and it went up to 60 in like, what was it, like a month? <laughs> it is crazy, April 7th. It's a bit before April 7th, but um, yeah, they, this company wants to like become like a, they wanna have like a huge product line of like adult line stuff and like skincare line, like a bunch of stuff, right? So. I, sometimes like the the company that does really well like those are huge gains it was like twelve dollars to six dollars in like a month um i sold though and so did chills um i'll call him out i think he's i sold it at like 25 because i was like oh wow i made like 50 percent in like a couple couple days so i sold it and then it went to 60 i was like oh my god but i'll take the profit i think he sold around the same price as me too so we're both regretting not holding but at the same time we made money so it's all good but yeah, you never know, right? You never know. So you got to keep your eyes peeled on the Discord because if you guys were in the Discord, um, whoops, if you guys were in the Discord, then you would have known about Playboy. And there's a link in the description if you want to join the Discord. If it doesn't work, let me know. The burger joint. Yeah, I guess it, yeah, Freddie, oh, I guess it doesn't hurt to drop a couple hundred bucks into Doge. Uh, worst case, you lose, but even Elon can make you win huge. Yeah, um, I sold my Dogecoin. I think Freddie, oh, did as well. And you know what? It's never a bad idea to lock in some gains. And I didn't sell soon enough for GameStop. I made a little bit, but I could have made a lot more. And I learned from that. I'm like, you know, this is, seems pretty crazy. Um, what's it called? Um, This is why I kind of sold because I'm seeing like this, their market cap is massive, $73 billion. Um, to me, I'm like, phew, I'm going to move this over a little bit. Their market cap is $73 billion and I'm like, Ugh, like it's getting a little high and now it doesn't even matter if it becomes useful. If people start buying things with it, then um, yeah, maybe it will keep going up. I could see it actually hitting a dollar based on what happens this weekend with SNL. And, but I don't know how high it could really go. So I was like, oh no, I, I made some good profits. And what I did was my girlfriend was like, I really want a Peloton. And I'm like, well, the amount of money I made off Dogecoin was my half of the, the Peloton bike. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'll turn my Dogecoin, my quick gain into something real. And yeah, I don't regret selling, but I think it'll hit a dollar. So I just can't see it going to like $5 because I think they issue 5 billion more Dogecoin per year. So this thing like never stops making more. And that's the red flag I kind of see. I'm like, what happens if there's not, and, and if there's enough buyers and people keep buying this thing and there's lots of hype and it becomes useful and like more and more merchants are accepting it. We had the Oakland Athletics, the baseball team, they started accepting it. And we had the Mavericks, of course. If it comes more useful, then that five billion of being issued will be okay, I think. But if if people stop using it, there has to be enough buyers to keep the price up. So that's the risk I saw in Dogecoin. But I I, I think most people aren't really gonna put so much money into Dogecoin. Some people might, but I feel like people just have a little bit of play money in there, hopefully. 
yeah, it's a hype play. Sundial, minus 50 right now, 1.5 my average price, but it is 77 cents. Seems to go further. Yeah, Sundial, like, it's it sucks that they diluted their shareholders to kind of stay alive, and it's, yeah, it's not good. Like, I don't know where it's going to go. Like, I haven't really looked into Sundial lately. I think they have earnings coming up, but, yeah, I, I believe in the, the, the cannabis space, but uh, Sundial, like, I don't know. Anyone else have any thoughts on Sundial? The guy that started up the 300 restaurants, Junebug. That was Mr. Beast. So he had Mr. Beast Burger. You're selling after SNL. Are you gonna are you gonna sell like during it? I guess you're keeping an eye on the price. Just make it your goal to be you don't want to be the one holding the bag, right? And if this thing were to crash, I'm not saying it will. I don't know. Um, if it is to crash, just try not to be the one holding the bag. Try to break even. If you're putting a significant amount of money in, if you're just putting a little bit in that you could expect to go to zero, have fun with it. It could turn into, I don't know, you could buy some stocks in a in another company that has dropped. So I know Freddie O, he sold some of his Dogecoin to buy Neo. And that, I think that's a good move because... Neo is making cars. They're making something that's real. And I think the EV space is growing and Neo should keep growing, especially in the market. They're in the biggest, one of the biggest markets in the world, right? So you don't like Sundial? Yeah, I made a couple videos on Sundial and uh, I think I offended a couple Sundial shareholders and I just wanted to say what I thought about Sundial because I felt like the problem with YouTube right now is there's a lot of people making... Um, I try not to do this, just making too many hype videos like this, this stock will 50 X, like sh stuff like that. Like, so I tried to just say like, Hey, this is what I see with Sundial, the good and the bad. And I feel like when you're looking at any stock, there's no perfect stock. Like there's no perfect company, even Apple, they have problems. They're having issues with lawsuits, all that stuff with the Fortnite and the Epic games maker or the maker of Fortnite, Epic games. No company is perfect. Um, so yeah, I like to show both sides if I can. Sundial bag holders. Is like if they bought 100 McDonald's. If you word Sundial now as McDonald's of cannabis, obviously institutions are about to buy Sundial shares. Maybe, maybe institutions will buy Sundial shares, but there's also other cannabis companies out there that are performing better than sundial like i don't know sundial might turn around who knows um it's a it's a highly competitive space right because like one cannabis maker can make a pre-roll or a vape and another cannabis maker can make a similar one that really doesn't have much difference to the end consumer so it's all about creating brands i guess at that point so if, if they can create brands that sell and customers like over time then yeah th they'll grow but if their revenues aren't growing that much, I see that as a red flag. You got to look, you got to, in a space that's so competitive, you need to pick the companies that are growing. So Tilray, yeah, we talked about this at the beginning, but if anyone here is new to the stream, um, Tilray, yeah, not a, I'll go back to it because that was kind of like one of the themes of the week. Ugh. This is kind of like the, the main topic of the day. $63 <laughs> down 77%. I don't know. The way I see Tilray is if you were thinking that 420 was coming or um, the U S might make some like legalization things happen in the short term, you just need to uh, remember that it's not going to move as quick. Just assume it's not going to move as quick as you want. Right. Well, and I've been in this space for five years, investing in it. I originally invested my first stock ever was Aurora Cannabis, ACB. And I sold that one a while ago, like a couple while ago, like three or four years ago. And then I went to Afria, Cannabis Growth, and things went up, things went down, things went up, things went down. And there wasn't even like news covering any of these companies really, like barely. And I was like, no one gets it yet. And then finally, there was a big uh, run for Afria and all the stocks recently so i sold some more but that i don't think that run that happened here 
I don't think that was like justified. I don't think like, whoop, my stream is gonna... Sorry, getting used to this new computer. Like, I don't think this should have happened this fast. And that's the thing, when things hype, I love it when things hype, it's super exciting. Like the whole GameStop thing and all that and Dogecoin and when this was happening, it's super fun. Everyone's like more engaged in the stock market. You go on Twitter, you go on all the social media, TikTok, everyone's talking about the stock market. It's, it's fun. And I think everyone is excited for that to happen again because that's the world we live in now in investing. And I think more and more, um, more people are engaged and they're more engaged in the stock market. So when that happens though, and everyone's attention is on this industry and it went up, it went up a little too fast. So what I'm trying to say here is that I think these levels are deserving someday if they execute, not just going to happen because the legalization, if they perform, show good numbers, start entering new industries, like they disrupt pharmaceutical, the skincare lines, they start working with like a CPG brand, make a partnership. There's a chance this company could be that global player. And they keep saying global leader in cannabis. I'd say don't jump to that conclusion just yet. Be a little bit of a pessimist because there are some U.S. companies that are growing a lot faster right now just because of the market they're in. So, yeah, I just think like I'm thinking three to four, five more years out just because like the way the politics is in the U.S. and say something did happen this year, um, it would still take like 18 months for the law to actually come to uh to start like in New York, I think it's like 18 months till New York is actually legalized at a rec level. Yeah. So cannabis is very, uh, volatile. Long-term picks. Uh, okay. Uh, let's, there's my phone. So I recently purchased Alibaba, to be honest, uh, because, where is this stock? It, what was it, 317, let's just say 300-ish. In the last like six-ish months, more seven months, it's dropped a lot. And like this type of drop, 28% for a big tech company that's this big, $613 billion market cap, that's a big drop. And the reason it dropped is because around here, Jack Ma, the CEO of, old, former CEO of Alibaba, did a speech and he offended the Chinese uh, Communist Party. And they they were going to IPO this Ant Group, which is going to be one of the biggest IPOs in history. And they had to cancel the IPO. And since then, Alibaba, their stock went down. But this company is bringing in huge revenues. They're growing super fast. They're developing a cloud business and they're already the leader in cloud business in China. And the Chinese cloud business has still a lot more room for growth than where the U.S. business currently is. And I think like holding this one long term, like I'm not even worried about this one. I've actually put a pretty big position, started a pretty big position in it. And I just see it as a way to diversify away from just North America. Because, I don't know, North say, say there's this whole thing where like America loses its dominance in the world and... China takes over and they're the number one economic power in the world, which I don't know if it's actually going to happen. If say that does happen, then I'm kind of diversified to capitalize on that a little bit. Again, the risk here is the fact that the Chinese government might try to screw with them even more. So, but yeah, I just saw like that drop. I'm like, that's a huge drop for a massive company like that. Like, that's massive. So I'm like, there's an opportunity to make some money back. And this is like what you call a contrarian play. So if a stock drops a lot, it's not because of their business, it's because of kind of an outside factor, then maybe it's a good time to buy, right? So um, that's a big position I just started. I'm not saying to buy it, but, um, and it, you never know with the Chinese government, might, they might try something, right? They might try to take over the company, who, who knows? But Charlie Munger, which is Warren Buffett's partner at Berkshire Hathaway, he entered a giant position in this as well. And well, he doesn't make too many stock purchases. And I saw that and I was like, oh, he's doing this. I looked at their numbers, pretty good. So that's that's one. I'll talk about more as I go. I just want to get caught up in the comments a little bit.
Your screen is so blurry, can't see. Which screen is blurry? My, um... Oh, you don't have a problem with it? Okay, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm at my, uh... I'm at my parents' house. I'm working on a visa for the U.S. to get back to to L.A. to live there. Just the government, the border is super slow. So I'm in my parents' house and the internet's all right. But there's a lot of people in here. There's, there's like four of us, five of us here. So we're all on our devices. I just turned the Wi-Fi off my phone. But if it's, yeah, thanks. It's not blurry. I shouldn't keep talking about this. Yeah, China is taking over. Um, and yeah, if China does take over and they keep growing... I want to have some companies that are exposed to that market. So I think the delisted question came back from um, the Sundial comment. Um, so so basically on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, I think both, they have like a rule. You're not, you're not allowed to really be under a dollar. So if you're under a dollar for too long, and I think around here they, they trade around a dollar sundial and um they got out of it and the new york stock exchange or i think that's nasdaq the nasdaq allowed them to stay on the nasdaq but yeah if you trade under a dollar for too long they'll take you off and you have to go on like the lower exchange because the nasdaq is for the nice companies the big established companies and all that they don't want they don't really want to be associated with penny stocks um but anyways like what a company can do if they're if they're trading under this dollar is they can reverse split their shares. So they can like 10, 10 to one or one to 10 reverse their shares. So one one share will be 10 times the price. But then there's a 10, t it's, it's like how Tesla split their shares to make their shares smaller. You can split your shares to make your share price higher. So they have that in order to not get delisted. But I don't think that's a good sign as a, as a company. So if you're holding 100 shares and they do a split of 10, you now only have 10 shares. So you're, the shares that you hold go down as well. And my, my uh, talking is a little delayed. I think the chat is like 15 seconds behind. So I know I went on for too long about the screen being blurry. <laughs> Any thoughts on DraftKings? So did you guys see the, the earnings from... Penn National Gaming. Their stock went down today. Um, yeah, they'll probably give like a warning. The way the NASDAQ did it to Sundial was they said, hey, in the next six months, you have to trade above a dollar for 10 consecutive trading days. And I think around here, this is when they did it. They like got above a dollar and they kind of stuck around there for a while. Um, and then they, yeah, they had to do it by June, 10 days in a row. And then they weren't delisted. So we don't, I don't, I don't know the official rules on how long they, if they stay under a dollar for too long, they might risk that again. But I know there's a couple people that I haven't made a video about this one in a while. I know there's a couple people that uh, like this stock high tide and they're one of the companies that doesn't trade on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. They trade on the TSX Venture and they want to be on the NASDAQ because once you're on the big exchanges, all the institutional investors and all the big money, they have more access to your stock, which will actually probably boost the stock price if you're a good business. But a lot of people are saying that this company might reverse split their shares so they can trade above a dollar and then be on the big exchange. So I don't like that. I kind of want to see them grow by themselves and deserve to be on the exchange. Um, and I think they will grow themselves. So just give them some time. This one's like a, it needs to be able to jump into the U.S. market to be, to grow their sales even more, I think. But yeah, let's see here. Yeah, so back to that DraftKings story, I dodged the question. I was like, so... I believe like sports betting in general, like all that stuff um, is is only going to grow. In the U.S., there's like not too many companies that, uh, there's not too many states even that have this yet. And I think over time, it's a source of tax revenue for states. And it's kind of like the cannabis thing. It kind of makes sense to legalize it. So we're seeing, I think Michigan or Illinois was, was doing it last. They legalized sports betting 
Um, so like the Penn National Gaming, who's associated with Barstool Sports. Um, I like those companies. I think they're kind of a long-term play. It's a growing industry. The only thing I'd raise as a red flag is the market cap. They're a little high. Like these valuations may be a little high. So, but that's like with everything these days, right? Everything's kind of high right now. And um, you just got to be aware of that. So that's another reason I'm not going too heavy on my buys right now because I think things are still a little high and they could drop uh, a little more. But yeah, if these ones retreat more, a lot of them are going to be buys for sure. Yeah, exactly. They have the regulatory issues. So they, their addressable market isn't that big, right? Um, it's big, but it could be bigger. So when you get, when we have some news coming out about a state, a big state making changes to the rules, like that's going to help these stocks, right? So um, if you're betting on the fact that those rules are going to keep changing and it, it'll take, laws take forever to change, especially in the United States, right? So you just not, I think you need to have a long-term outlook. And I, I believe like the engagement in sports right now, it's low. Obviously the diehard fans are like super into it, but sports is a massive thing. It's like a religion at this, pretty much a religion for some people, right? And I think with the reopenings and all that stuff, sports is going to like peak, like again, it's going to get crazy. So um, yeah, if you're betting on sports, if you're betting on the changes in, in the laws happening, then I like these ones, but um, I don't personally have any money in them at this point. I think I have a little bit in like Square Cash App where I just bought like a couple sh like portions of shares, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, people have a gambling mindset since casinos are closed, uh, especially in Canada. Yeah, Canada right now, we're still in a pandemic. <laughs> it's not good. We need more vaccines, I guess. Uh, they didn't get enough. Yeah, so uh, yeah, what was I was going to say options yeah options opportunities i started dabbling in options a little bit i bought a pinterest one contract but i'm not a short-term options guy i'm not like looking for an option for the next week i don't bet on i don't do options uh, before earnings and all that i bought a pinterest 2023 expiry option so long term i think the company it's not going to grow as much in terms of user base due to the pandemic ending but I see them as kind of a Facebook and they can kind of like turn up the notch. They can, they can turn up the amount of advertising that happens on their platform and they can just grow their revenues in that way. And I think Pinterest has more daily active users than um, Twitter. Or monthly users. I wonder if I get a paywall here. Ooh, no. I don't know where I saw that. Some of these things are outdated. I just think they're like in the top like seven most used social media platforms. So that's why I bought long-term options in them. Just one contract, which equals 100 shares. So, but yeah, I would be uh, super um, cautious if you're going to get into options because I've, I've bought... <laughs> I bought an options before, like when I first started, I didn't even know how they worked and I lost, but I don't even know why, but I started getting it. I started understanding the long-term ones. Um, so Disney, I'll jump into that. I like Disney, like that company, it seems boring, but they're in it. They're in a space that's, they're growing their streaming service, which is like massive. And when you're investing, you need to remember, like, just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not happening. That's the way I like to look at things. And Disney Plus, it's in people's homes. So you can't really see the scale of it. There's no, like, picture to really represent the scale of Disney Plus, right? And it's growing a lot. And for a streaming service, for all the streaming services that have been launching and trying to grow, Disney's been slaughtering it, killing it. So they've only been around for, like, less than two years. And th their user base is massive. And the amount of shows they're going to start producing like that have all those like diehard fans, it's interesting. And then all their parks are reopening soon. And I think that's an interesting play as well because people are going to want to go on vacation. I think their, their, their vacation business is going to like do very well coming up. So 
I, th- I like Disney, and I think they took away their dividend, though. So, But they used the dividend to grow the business, I think. The amount that they were spending on the dividend. So, Yeah, options, I don't think it is investing. So uh, I don't, like, recommend it. I, like, have that w- I have, like, one option contract for Pinterest. Two paper shares? That's cool. <laughs> I've seen those websites where you can buy like paper shares. I forget the name. Buy paper. I think it's yeah. I think it's this one. Unique stock gift. You can buy like an Apple share, <laughs> and you can frame it on your wall, and you have a share. You can redeem it at any time. I guess <laughs> it's. I don't know if I'd buy it, but they say it's a good gift idea for a diehard stock fan. But I don't know. I wouldn't. I. I if you have one, I'm not sure. I wonder wonder the story about how you got it. Um, yeah, we'll discuss Tilray in a sec again. I'll jump back in on that. Um, I want to talk about, I know one, one of you is asking about growth stocks. So I just want to jump in on that on another growth stock. And I'm going to look at my, uh, it's this one, JP Morgan. And this one sounds super boring, right? JP Morgan. But um, this this bank is the biggest bank in the U.S., and they're, like, killing it compared to the other banks. Um, I, I I think this is – I think their, like, target price is, like, 185 on average. I'll look at it for you guys. But what they're doing in 2021, they're doing $30 billion in buybacks. So a lot of big companies – they buy back their shares. I think Apple does it. They have a buyback program. So they take shares off the market. And what does that do? It increases the value of the remaining shares. So um, yeah, I saw some analysts thinking it's around 185. I've seen that one. So this one's like one I keep adding to. And I don't know, it's a powerful bank and they're on top of things. They're involved in a lot of industries just in what they invest in. So I think it's a good bet. Like it's not a company that you're going to wake up and be like, Oh my God, I just lost 50% in a week. Like, I don't think that's going to happen with this one. And the CEO of this company is like very good at what he does. I think in like 2008, when all the banks were failing, he was like, it's not my fault. They're all failing. Like I'm, we're running our company well. And like, that's their problem. It's like, he, he had some controversial comments during that whole thing, but, um, very smart guy, Jamie Dimon, but I like JP Morgan. I think it's a good stock. Um, to put long term, just hold it. Don't think about it. Growth stocks. So I love Peloton. Let's see Peloton. What else do I have here? I like Facebook because uh, I don't know if Facebook would be considered a growth stock. It's kind of like an older stock. I uh, I've been buying a lot of Shift. I think I have enough for now. I think I bought like five hundred shares, but. Um, this one, it's a um, e-commerce for cars. So they're, uh, they, you basically buy a car off your phone. You could sell a car on your phone. And, oh, yeah, I'll shout out that dividend for JP Morgan. Love a nice dividend. Um, yeah, so this company, they're a little lower. They're on kind of sale right now. I've been buying them just around here, like slowly, just adding to the position. And the reason I like them is because $711 million market cap. So it's small. So it has room for growth. And a lot of like analysts aren't even like talking about this one yet. And this is one that I feel like it might be talked about in a couple of years if they perform well. They're not they're they're not even selling in every state in America. So they still need to grow. But this is a big company. You might have seen commercials, Carvana. They uh their market cap is at $45 billion, which is like completely insane. They're like the leaders in like used car sales now. And I don't know. I like this company shift because they're cracking a giant market. So I don't know. I think they have a cool brand. They've been testing out some advertising um, shift. They're, apparently, they say their advertising is going really well. So, I don't know. I think used cars, it's always going to be kind of a thing, right? Like, 
people want to buy cars used. Most people don't buy them new. I'll look at skills in a sec. I don't know too much about that one. I haven't jumped in, but it's been dropping a lot, I know. Who popped off after hours? Shift. Twenty six cents, not bad, yeah. If that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They it looks like they had so so this company, um I don't know, I I like the fact that the used car market is huge. It's billions of dollars potentially. Um, I'll find the slide. I haven't looked at this exact presentation. This is like their updated one. I looked at their previous one before. Um, where's their map? Yeah, so they operate in like the West Coast and then they have like a hub in like Texas where they like only buy cars, but then they use those cars they buy to ship to other states. And they basically like, if you want to test drive a car, they'll drive it to your house and you can test drive it and then you can decide if you want to buy it. And they do all the paperwork for you, the loans if you need it, all that stuff. Um, and apparently it's a really good service. They take the car, they take it to like their own shops and they fix the car, they clean it up. Any problems with it, they'll make it run well. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think this is a cool company and they're kind of disrupting the used car space because this is what you get this is what you get when you go buy a used car, just like this type of guy, right? Like, <laughs> not always, but um, this is like, so then he calls you like 50 times, like, hey, now we're in the future, right? So this company will, uh, they'll uh, they'll just give you an Instagram ad over and over again until you uh, buy a car. It's a different, different setup, but yeah, I just think it's a cool disruptor. So keep an eye on that one. And that's not financial advice. I'm thinking long-term with that one as well. And if it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. So, but I could see it being like a $15 stock in like a year. What else? What else do I have on my list here? Um, like lem lemonade is nice. I like this one. I don't really think about it. I have, I have a good amount of shares in lemonade, but I don't, I try not to think like some things I'm thinking long term. I just try not to think about because I, I don't have it. I'll add to it every once in a while. Um, this one I bought like around here and then it went like crazy, like 176, one wild. And then it's back down to a more reasonable level. And like, I don't think this was justified didn't need to get go up that fast it was pretty hyped but they're disrupting a major industry insurance and right now they do not do car insurance they do renter insurance home insurance pet insurance stuff like that and they what they do is they they, they use an algorithm and they use ai to handle their insurance business so if you have a claim um i'll, I'll find i like look at the investor presentations if you have like a claim you don't go to like an agent. They'll just use AI to determine how much they owe you based on like all their data and stuff. It's kind of interesting, but and they have cool branding and they're trying to target millennials. The idea is to get millennials in on, um, where is it? Do they have a presentation? They're trying to get uh, millennials in into their ecosystem. And once you start buying renter insurance, then one day maybe you'll buy car insurance and then one day you'll have a home and buy home insurance and then you're in this like ecosystem, right? Then you don't leave because you're having good service. So I wish that's just a letter. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think this one, again, it's a long-term hold for me. I'm not thinking it's gonna do, do anything anytime soon, but. That's one I'm keeping if you want to look for growth. Tilray. So we'll go back to Tilray. Let's look at some news for Tilray. The Motley Fool. I don't know if you like them. I'm not happy with the fact I couldn't access my Tilray shares, but that's okay. <laughs> so. 
I see, I see a couple potential. I'll look at their new website. I see like a couple reasons why I like this company, but I'm also, I'm trying to think about the reasons why you need to be cautious. Right. And Tilray for me is like a leader in Canada. And a lot of people are saying like Canada doesn't matter though. You need to be the leader in the world and you need to be the leader in America. Right. So right now they're not selling a single dollar of cannabis in America. And some people see that as a problem. The thing is, just because the current regulations state by state in America are the way they are now, doesn't guarantee that's going to be the rules in the future, right? So um, maybe them not being in America just right now is actually going to work in their favor. And a lot of people jump to conclusions like, a lot of people thought the merger would happen and the stock prices would both go to the moon and that didn't happen. Um, so a lot of people are jumping to conclusions saying MSOs are the only ones going to make it in America. And I've made a couple videos on why I like MSOs and I do like MSOs. I just think like it's important to have kind of both sides of the border, but Canada is a decent market. It didn't grow as fast as many people anticipated. And some states in the U.S. are bigger, but it's a regulated market. And Tilray might have the right setup to jump into a more regulated American market. Because right now there's rules on like packaging in Canada and things have to be super, you can't have too much branding. They have to spend a little bit more money on their packaging. It has to be child proof and in, in, in California, for example, you buy products and there's like nice art on this stuff and like it's easy to access, it's easy to open. Maybe maybe the rules in um, America will be kind of strict, right? And then Tilray already has like their packaging ready to adapt and all that, so. Oh yeah, sorry, I got interrupted. Oh, the stream works. Just get off the Wi-Fi. My dad is telling me it, the stream is blurry. You just turn off the Wi-Fi on your devices. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, turn it off. Sorry about that. So, yeah, I think um, Tilray, there's still room to grow in Canada. There's still more stores opening. And I wouldn't be surprised if their next earnings come out to be kind of hit or miss like uh, like Afria didn't have the best sales in the last quarter but that was because of the pandemic and maybe american investors can't picture that canada is still in a pandemic but we're still in a pandemic up here like we're pretty much at home at all times so um i in the city i'm in right now you can't like leave like your area you can't go on like a road trip to go like camping or like go to the beach in a different part of the go to the lake somewhere so we're in this like pandemic here so i think that's going to hurt the sales of Tilray in the near term. And maybe that's going to bring the share price down even more and present more of a buying opportunity. So I think you just need to be prepared for anything. Right. And then if we start seeing issues like with the stock, if like you go through a couple quarters when there's like a free market, there's no closures and there's, and their sales are dropping stuff like that. Then you start seeing red flags and I'll obviously keep everyone updated on the channel. If I start seeing some major red flags with, Tilray, but for now, it's kind of stuff that's out of their control right now, right? So, your MSO of choice is uh, Cure Leaf. Yeah, I think uh, Cure Leaf is a great is a great uh, company as well. I think I'm I'm big on Cresco Labs and True Leaf, Cure Leaf Green, all the big ones, right? Um. The thing is, like with the with the American ones, like you don't know which one might not make it. In Canada, at least we're kind of safe to assume that like Tilray's kind of jumped out to be like the leader, maybe canopy growth as well. But like a few years ago, it was still kind of like, oh, uh Hexo and Hexo's doing well, I guess, right now, but it was still like you weren't as sure who was gonna be the real leader. Now we kinda of know, like Tilray's trying to get that twenty percent market share, they're trying to get it to thirty percent. If that happens, we know they're doing well. That means right now, if they're at twenty percent market share, every dollar in Canada that is spent on legal cannabis 
20 cents of the dollar goes to Tilray, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's not bad. I like Cresco because their valuation. Um, it's a little smaller than Cureleaf, a little lower. Um, and I think they, they have an attractive like portfolio of brands. Yeah, so SL, you make a good point. Tilray has a uh, good exposure to the European market, and that's true. Um, and what 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 Cureleaf did by jumping into the Europe market kind of showed that hey, Europe's an important market. And most of us, I don't know if anyone here is from Europe. I'm in North America. You don't really think about Europe as much because you're not in the same time zone at all. You don't imagine it. You know. I don't go there very often. <laughs> I wish I went there more often, but, um, but yeah, without it's, it, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here because I'm getting distracted. But, um, yeah, I think Europe, they have like 500 something million people there. No, it's 700 something million up there. But I think, uh, Europe is a huge market that a global leader has to win. Yeah, and I think we're super early in even in America. So your America is all about the free market, right? Like they, they 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 pride themselves on capitalism. So I don't think Tilray will be restricted from easily jumping into the US market. Yeah, so I think a lot of investors right now um they are disappointed that they didn't get rich quick and it sucks cuz I'm sure a lot of people didn't make lost money right and they they jumped in at the hype time and i think 420 was a catalyst and that didn't end up happening and then we also had like chuck schumer he still hasn't done his thing and biden doesn't seem like he wants to do anything so yeah i think people are they're like ah, i'm not gonna hold on to these things it's gonna keep dropping and that mentality is helping it drop even further right so um yeah i, I held afria from like three dollars i originally bought four dollars i kept buying all the way up to like 10 and then it went to like 16 and then it dropped during the pandemic to like three dollars and i was like oh my god <laughs> and i went back up again so i've been on these rides before and we're close does anyone think like legalization will actually happen in 2021 or even 2022 Because I, I'm starting to think that politics. You had an average of Tilray at 13. I think yeah. I think um, I don't know. It's going to be politics getting in the way, and possibly during the midterm elections in 2022, it might get talked about. But um, yeah, like we'll have to see. Yeah, so Texas, they are a massive market. I can't remember off the top of my head how many people live in Texas. That That's like the last big market that needs to do something. 29 million. I'm sure this is getting closer to California. <laughs> but yeah, Texas is, uh, Texas is big and I think there's more like liberal people moving there and um, it's a good opportunity for tax revenue. Like it makes sense, right? <laughs> So, I don't know, Texas will do it. Um, Texas will do it soon enough, I think. Yeah, Elon Musk and Joe Rogan. Um, and Joe, Elon Musk, maybe he's our savior of the, of the cannabis sector. He just needs to go on Joe Rogan and just uh, smoke a bit of like Tilray stuff. I don't know how he'd get it in the country, but uh, wouldn't that be good? Then he'll go on SNL and do it. <laughs> There's only six states left where it's completely illegal. Yeah. It, that's the thing. Like people, I think it's like 66% of Americans like want something to be changed. And it, it's just like politics getting away in the way. But Eventually, there's going to be a point where if these 
next politicians in line want to um, the, these next politicians in line want to get in like elected again they're gonna have to like be in favor of this so it just it, it just takes some time right it makes it makes so much sense to legalize it so uh, we'll just have to wait that's gonna be a bumpy ride on this uh, roller coaster <laughs> But that's what you signed up for, okay? And if you don't like it, you don't need to go on, stay on the ride. But um, only put in enough money that you just don't need. Like, I wouldn't say don't put in money that you can't afford to lose 100%. Like, I can't see the good cannabis companies going to zero. But you never know. Um, just, yeah, money that you don't need. If you need, if you need to put your money in something that will grow but you need to take it out randomly for something put it in like a etf or something like s p 500 the earning of tilray well it's coming out soon i think it's uh tilray earnings dates sorry if it's noisy it's someone's making noise in there i'm stuck without my visa to the u.s <laughs> but i'll know by uh, june 30th about my visa That's not good. That's not the earning date. I don't know when the date is. May 10th, maybe here it says. I don't always trust the, the dates on this website, on the NASDAQ. It's usually kind of like automated, but let's assume May 10th. And I think that is the same day as Roblox as well. So could that, could that be an exciting day? Let's see. Yeah, Roblox is May 10th for sure, I believe. So a business inquiry, um, maybe... Can you message me on Instagram and then I can give you my email? My Instagram is uh, right here. And it's in the description. Oh, here, I'll just put it on here. It, it's a white background, so it doesn't look the best. But yeah, if you want to find me on Instagram and message me and you have a business inquiry, like I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah, so Tilray Earnings, it's coming out uh, May 10th, and I'm just I'm just not going to expect the best because just the way it went for Afria and they dealt with closures, that's what I'm expecting, but you never know. You never know. Yeah. The thing is, the stock reacted poorly to Afria's earnings. I mean, that's just part of it. Um, it's just part of the game. Not every earnings is going to be perfect. And I think Afria, they had a good track record of having very good earnings. So, um, yeah, like sometimes they're not going to have the best earnings. And that's just part of it. Like Apple has bad earnings. And like doesn't mean it's a bad stock. It just means it didn't have earnings that were good that quarter. The thing is, they have Sweetwater Brewing, which I know is a microbrewery. It's not really going to turn into like a Budweiser anytime soon, but it's a good way for them to kind of like be set up for like the beverage market, which I don't know if the beverage market is going to be um, massive. Like, are people going to be into buying like cannabis beverages and drinking like a six pack or do they only want one? The beauty about beer is you can drink six. You have a crazy time, I guess, but... I don't know if you want to drink six cannabis beverages in one sitting, unless they change the formula up to make it so it's possible to drink that many. Um, but if beverages are a thing, they're they're going to be set up through Sweetwater to to build that. So um, we'll have to wait and see. I, I'm betting on the fact that there's going to be products in cannabis that we don't even know yet. The ones that haven't been invented yet. The ones they're studying. I know Canopy Growth has like they have like a hundred or so patents patents, and, and I don't know what those are exactly for, but I think these companies are doing studies on like what could be useful. Like maybe there's a skincare um, brand that they're coming up with that could be useful and like more natural than like the, the like chemicals. And maybe like it's just like the green thing. Every company is trying to be green now, like eco friendly. And eventually, like maybe these big CPG companies, like Procter and Gamble and all those companies, maybe. Uh, Maybe maybe they want to have more natural products, and maybe cannabis is an ingredient to um, to add to their products to make it better. And maybe people, maybe consumers are going to be ready for that.
Sweet water better than water. Who here has actually tried sweet water? Because I, I haven't I haven't tried it yet. Um, I was in California in LA and uh, looking at Bevmo, nothing, no sweet water at the time. So I don't know about um, now. Maybe they're expanding. I heard they sweet water has been expanding to other states. I'm not going to log in. Okay, I got the Instagram message. Thanks. I'll check it out after this. So Erwin Simon thinks that they're going to be able to enter the States with the topical cream that will be before legalization, right? So it'll be like CBD or something. I'm guessing. Yeah, you could hear the Canada. I'm proud of the Canadian accent. Hopefully you guys can understand it. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to try this stuff. I think they, I think I heard they came out with this one like more recently. Just, hard seltzer is now such a competitive market. All the big guys are, are in it now, but yeah, I guess you come up with a flavor like cherry and lime. It's a little different from like the typical just cherry or just lime. Uh, yeah, you can't, I can't, you can't see Tilray as just a cannabis company. They're trying to be a CPG company, right? So, um, this is the company that, that Erwin Simon founded. He built this into a multi-billion dollar business and you may know some of these products. Brands. I actually bought one of these the other day. But yeah, some of these products, like you may not know them, you may know them, but I've seen this one, like Terra chips. <laughs> they make like uh, sweet potato chips. Wow, I gotta get my name up here, sorry. Yeah, so they make chips. So this guy has built brands, right? He's built, he knows how to, how to, how to build a brand and get it sold. Like some of these brands are in Whole Foods already. And, and I don't know, I think he's going to continue to come up with new brands with Tilray Afria. And eventually like there might be one that like catches on. And these days, all you need is something that becomes viral, right? Sleepy time tea. Exactly. Exactly. My girlfriend got me on sleepy time tea and I didn't realize it was a, a Irwin Simon brand until I started looking into this, but where is that one? Sleepy time, sleepy time. I saw it, but it's gone. <laughs> it's one of these ones. Anyway, so yeah, I trust that Irwin Simon, he's not just... <laughs> He already gets paid a lot. Like his salary is really high and people were like, oh, this guy just gets paid, overpaid. But I don't think he's there to just make a quick buck. He's trying to build something bigger and then obviously get a bigger payout because of that. But um, I don't know. I, I believe like he's a good leader. And if you guys weren't invested in Afria for a long time, he came on as like the interim uh, CEO and he was like the temporary CEO for like a year or maybe not quite a year, but he slowly changed the business. The business had a lot of bad press and there was a lot of like reporters saying, this company is not real. There was some short reports and he took it over during this like really tough time and he got them out of that and he changed their like public image. And people were like, can this guy just be the CEO? We're tired of, he'd be in interviews with CNBC and they're, he, it's a interim CEO. So he finally said yes. And since then he's kind of like built Efria into like a stronger business. So... Give the guy some time. He's not in a rush. He's just trying to slowly make the right moves. And um, I think the Tilray merger was one of the best merger opportunities that they had in Canada. But I guess they could have gone after like Hexo too or something. But I don't like Kronos. I think Kronos is a little overvalued. Like they're, they, they're like, I don't know. They, they don't even make sales but they have a lot of cash from it, a big investment. So I think, yeah, Tilray and Afria might be one of the best options for a, a merger. Yeah, so yeah, now you know. Now you know about Hain Celestial. <laughs> and I think they trade on the stock market. I don't, don't invest in them. 
like I, I don't know if we should it's worth investing in but uh four four billion dollar business so that's for food so Irwin has the opportunity to be in cannabis he has the opportunity to be in alcohol skincare and then food we have the Manitoba harvest I don't know if, if there's more health people out there this is a brand This is a brand from Tilray, but now it's obviously like just Tilray. This was their side. Um, you may have seen this one before. It is, um, yeah, hemp seeds and stuff. They do granola. And basically, if you see this, you see it in the store, you could be like, hey, I own a piece of this business. This is my company. <laughs> so I've actually bought some of their granola the other day because I'm like, I'll support these guys. I think their sales aren't that high. This isn't like a huge chunk of their business. But what they have here is their retailers. It's going to check my location. I don't know. I think they sell them like Amazon, Whole Foods. Um, this is just showing my uh, local stuff. I wonder if you could search Los Angeles. Yeah, these stores are not in Los Angeles. But anyway, that St. John's, is that Canada? Anyway, it doesn't matter. This company is sold like in a lot of stores. So. I don't know. It's one of their arms of the business. Maybe they're going to grow their food business eventually, right? Yeah. What if Whole Foods wants to sell cannabis one day? They sell beer. So what's stopping them from selling cannabis one day? But that, I think that's like a, another decade at least. But UFC went public? Oh, is this going to be? Justin Davis, are you talking about Tilray's cash? Yeah, maybe maybe this uh, UFC thing is a, is a SPAC. SPACs are really getting beat up these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah see, if you, see if you get the right ticker. Another SPAC that might be coming out is uh, Equinox Fitness. Um, I don't, I'm pretty sure it didn't happen yet. But the valuation just didn't make sense. It was like a seven, eight billion dollar valuation. Yeah, the company, and these are the type of things you need to look for. Like, not every company is a good investment. I actually used to work out at this gym. I liked it a lot, it was awesome, but they've obviously had a tough 2020. Um, but yeah, they're valued at $7.5 billion and they brought in $650 million in revenue in 2020. And those type of numbers, you see that with tech. And the thing about tech is tech can like scale up. Tech can be big really fast if you create something that's useful on like a cell phone that like millions of people can use. But a gym, if they want to scale, they have to open a gym and they have to open a location, get members there, all that stuff. I just can't see them like scaling up that fast, but they do have an app and they do own SoulCycle as well. Like they're all in the same group. Uh, maybe their app becomes like an online like home workout thing. But yeah, that's just the thing that popped out at me when I saw this. I'm like $7.5 billion valuation, that many in sales. But that was a bad year for them. Maybe this year they'll have more sales. C-R-A-F. What happened to this stock? <laughs> I guess it hasn't moved that much. Like it's it's kind of stayed in the same spot. Like a, this looks like a lot, but eleven dollars to ten. I guess it's new, right? Been around since February. Doesn't even go back further. Oh, yeah, February. Yeah, I'll have to look into this one more. Los Angeles, California. Some people are saying these like micro cannabis companies in the U.S. are like the future. They could they they're the ones that are growing quality stuff. Um, and then those ones could get acquired one day, right? And some people are saying that the, the strategy of having dispensaries, like all the MSOs have, they're like fighting to get more dispensaries. That's not even going to be the key strategy one day. Um, one guy comment on my, one of my videos about this. He's like, it's all about wholesale. And if you think he made up a really good point, it got me thinking if you're a beer company, 
like Corona, are you opening Corona bars or are you selling your beer in bars and selling your beer in grocery stores and selling your beer in liquor stores? It's the wholesale where they make their money. So is that how cannabis is going to work one day? Is it like if you grow a quality product and you sell it to the masses through distribution, through wholesale, is that the, those are going to be the winners or are they going to be the winners or are the winners going to be the companies that connect with the consumer right to the consumer? So they control the store and they control the, the brand in the store. They control the relationship with the customer. Is that going to be the winner? So, or is it going to be a bit of both? We'll have to see. So yeah, some companies like Cresco labs, they have wholesale they're working on and they also have dispensaries. So, um, I could see Tilray their, their goal, obviously they're going to be a little behind on dispensaries, but, um, maybe they start their U S expansion by doing wholesale and they sign some deals with some big dispensaries. So we'll have to wait and see. ED Endeavor holding group. Twenty-five percent in its first week. Shares debuted around twenty-four dollars, went to thirty. The pandemic hurt Endeavor Group, as its live events were on hold for a year. This actually kept the company from going public. That's that's not a bad thing. Um, so they own more than just the USC, managing talent. They digital media companies, actors. Interesting. So. Entertainment is going to have a big bounce back, I think. And we're about to hit this little like roaring 20s and people just want to have fun. So maybe this company will capitalize off that, right? And that's like goes back to Disney as well. People want to go on vacation. People want to have some fun, take their kids around. So I think all those companies are going to see some good sales and maybe they're going to see some good earnings. Um, I, I need to look deeper into this type of, these type of plays though. Like I don't know enough about them. This got me thinking. Iconic brands. Plant 13. That's a good one. I'll look up. I try to look up iconic brands in a sec. So Plant 13. I stayed away from this one because when Plant 13 was hyping, and I'm going back to the Canadian one. Sorry, you guys can do the conversion. Um, when this one was getting popular, Afria was like trading for like $4. I was like, why isn't anyone talking about Afria? Come on. <laughs> and I was like on Meet Kevin. He kept making videos about this. He's like, Plant 13. And I was always commenting on his videos like, everyone needs to see Afria. And for some reason, this one got a lot of hype. But not saying it's going to be, it's not a good company. It's growing slowly and stuff. Um, I just didn't like the fact they were like one location. And it's a great concept. They, they have an awesome experience. It's so Vegas to have a mega dispensary, sell a ton of products and build that brand recognition. People come to Vegas, they see Planet 13 and I see Vegas is like a Amsterdam. You go to Amsterdam, you're not a user of this type of product, but you're in Amsterdam, so you try it. And same with Vegas. You go to Vegas, you're not a user of the product. You try it, you like it. Then you go back to your home market. Like I know they opened a location in Orange County so now you've connected with the brand in Vegas where you were on vacation, having a good time. You were in a good mood and you're back in Orange County. You see the same story. Like, oh, I'm going to go back there. I'm going to buy some of that stuff. See what else they have. That's what I like about them. It's cool. It's a different way to do it. Um, their store, I'll just, I'll look at some pic. I'll just look at their website. But I just didn't, I didn't invest because I thought like one or two stores isn't enough for me. So we'll see. We'll see. I think. Uh, th to me, I think there's still some time to jump in on this one, but I don't know. Is anyone else in this one? Seraph has parallel. I'll look at this one because some people have been messaging me about these like micro cannabis companies and this one's in California and people, people have been telling me like the, the California companies are doing very well. I saw a 60 minutes on like the California growers though. This was like a year and a half ago. And they're saying like, none of them are doing too well because of the regulations are super strict or something, but maybe that's changing. Right. 
by Tilray or LMT? I don't know LMT. I'd say Tilray, but... Oh, okay. Like the, they're like a big like aerospace defense, all that stuff. Um, there's a company that was being compared to this. Mm. Oh, some some people are saying that SpaceX is gonna possibly start taking away business from this company. Um, I met a guy in LA that worked for this company. He was like pretty high up. He's like, I manage 500 people on my team. I'm like, oh, wow. Like I don't even know what he did. He's some kind of like engineer guy. Um, yeah, this this. I don't know too much about this company. I can't comment. I'd say if you don't want to lose a lot of your investment, obviously this one's not going to like just like it was at 338 compared to 387. Like it, like Tilray could just bounce. So it depends what you want. You want your portfolio to just bounce all around a ton or you want it to like <laughs> kind of chill more. So, but again, you're, it's coming from someone that, has zero idea about the investment of this business in the in investing in this business. Yeah. D don't. Yeah. The goal, the goal is not to lose, right? I think, um, my goal is to trim positions better. And I had Peloton. It was at like one sixty or something. I didn't trim the position. I could have, but, I don't know. You also hear things like don't trim the position. If you have a good company, like uh, my girlfriend's parents, I think they had Starbucks or something and then they did, they sold it when it was like getting big and they got bigger over time. And just, or Amazon, like people that sold Amazon a while ago or any company, if it's a disruptive company that's growing globally, then maybe you don't sell. But at the same time, like I sold Afria at like $23 or something. Um, and that was a good decision. So I just want to, I used to go into the mentality of like a stock goes to this price and my entire position is going to be worth this much. And that's how much I'll have. But I always saw it as like, I have to sell the whole position off, but you really don't have to. You just need to take some money out of one position and put it into something else. And that kind of stabilizes your portfolio a little bit. So when I sold Afria, I put a lot of money into JP Morgan because it kind of, I wanted something kind of more safe and lock in my gains a bit. So I'm glad I did that and I wish I did it for Peloton, but maybe I don't wish I did it. I don't know. I, Peloton's different. I, I, I love that company, but some people hate it. So. Most of my watch list is red for a few days now, probably 70% of it. You think it's uh, due to inflation or it's only natural? So I don't know what's exactly on your watch list, but um, if you look, I saw a video about this today. All the hype stocks right now are down and that's just the game we're in. But if you look at the S&P 500, it's up. <laughs> so like the market technically isn't down, just certain stocks are. But that means the money has moved away from these hype stocks into something else. Could be crypto, right? Could be a lot of retail investors were in the hype stocks, but the, the, the skills, all those companies and stuff. Like, I don't know, maybe the money just rotated out of them and then they're going to rotate back into them at some point. So um, the way I see it is some of my positions that are like haven't exploded in value yet. Um, I'll just keep holding. And it really taught me to just have some like boring companies in your portfolio. And I have a huge amount of money in this. I'll go for the American ticker Vanguard. Vanguard S&P 500. It sounds super boring. But you get exposure to everything and it doesn't really like, look at this chart. This is what I call chart porn. Like it only goes up <laughs> and like when it goes down, this is the one that unless you're betting on the companies in the S and P 500 imploding, when it goes down, you have nothing to worry about any other stock. It goes down and you're like, ah, am I, is it good? like Tilray? Is it going to go down forever? But like, in his, if history tells us anything, the S and P 500 just keeps going up over time. So, and it's very high right now. Like who knows, maybe it drops, maybe it drops some more, but, um, that, that's what I put money in at usually. Like I, I constantly put money into this just to kind of keep exposed to the whole market, make sure 
as the market grows, a portion of my portfolio is growing and then I'll wait for my uh, growth stocks to finally explode. Yeah, yeah. So if taking profits is a good idea, it's it's never a bad idea to take profits. Um, but yeah, if you believe in the company long term and you're like, I'm just taking profits because I'm supposed to take profits and that's what I've been told to do and that's what Warren Buffett doesn't always take profits. I think he held some of his biggest positions. He just held forever and like obviously a lot of his companies he's held they have gone through the ups and downs and he just held and. Warren Buffett's like wealth wasn't created when he was younger. He became like super, super wealthy, like after he was like 70 and most people want to get rich now. They don't want to get rich slowly, but yeah, if you have a company that you think could grow higher, like I didn't sell Peloton cause I'm like, sure. They grew fast. Maybe they didn't deserve to grow that fast, but I'm like, this company has so much more potential in my opinion, becoming a global brand and they're only operating. Like I just bought one with my Dogecoin gains, but they're only operating like Germany, Canada, not even all of Canada, US, UK, I think maybe Australia soon, but that's nothing. There's still tons of markets where they can expand to. So for their bikes, I think they can do their app anywhere. Yeah, I've heard from like my uncles and parents and they're like, just try not to like move things around too much. Try, don't try to like do all this to your portfolio. Cause the more you make all these little moves and decisions, one day you'll regret why I do that. And I, we've all made mistakes, right? Like I've made mistakes. So yeah, sometimes it's hard not to do anything, but always keep a little cash and always just kind of, uh, buy little dips. So I bought a little bit of, piton today during the day before it kind of bounced back in the after hours and tomorrow it could probably crash again like these stocks have been moving weirdly lately like this this company is bringing in so much money like just printing money and it's like yeah <laughs> down record earnings stock goes down <laughs> i think microsoft I think they had record earnings too, and their stock just kind of dropped after their earnings. So, yeah, there it is. So, great companies. The reason why I think this is happening is just the valuations. I think the market still sees a lot of companies as being overvalued. So, you need to keep that in your mind and expect that things could drop for a while. We had like the craziest bull market for like. <laughs> Many of us weren't invested when the bull market started. When I show that S&P 500 chart, I'll just go VOO. Like many of us weren't even in the market at this point, but this is just like straight gains. We had a couple of hiccups, of course, but like straight, like this doesn't usually happen. So just because we're going through some interesting times now, we're still a lot higher than we were before. So just always be a little bit of a pessimist. How do you get cap tax in Canada for capital gains? It depends on which account. Um, I have a TFSA, but my mom's my accountant. I don't I, most. I haven't really like, touched my Canadian portfolio um, because I moved to the U.S., so I haven't really done much with it. I haven't made any sales. I just didn't want to have tax implications. But I think it just goes into your income. ATVI. Oh yeah. So I like gaming. Like gaming is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. One of my friends just uh, started working here in Orange County. So if you're watching, shout out Brett. <laughs> so in Canada, I believe we don't have like the whole short term, long term. Most, in, most uh, investors in Canada, especially around my age, we all have tax free savings accounts. Um, so what that is, is you make a gain and you sell it. You don't have tax. It's awesome. <laughs> and you can take those gains and put it back in. And as long as you can put it, you can put like $5,500 a year into your tax-free savings account. 
you can't put like unlimited amounts of money, but you can grow that into something big and there's no tax. There's obviously, so it's, it's kind of cool that Canada has those things, but I'm in this weird position right now where I have like half my net worth in America and like half my net worth in Canada. And like, I'm not a resident of Canada just yet, even though I'm in Canada right now in June, I think I have to declare being a resident again, just cause I've been here for six months almost. Um, so I have this weird, I'm trying to figure out my taxes and all that stuff. So for next year. So we'll see. It's going to get complicated, but I have uh, accountants on both sides of the border in the family. So uh, they help me. They help guide me. But yeah, people, if you can maximize your tax-free savings account, that's the goal in Canada. But if you over, if you like put too much money into your TFSA, say the limits every year since you turn 18, you get to put in a certain amount. So it could be like 50 grand that you could put in or 70 grand, whatever your age is, I guess. They only started doing this in like 2009 or something. It's, it's a new thing. But um, if you overdo it, if you over add to your TFSA, you get like huge fines. So keep an eye on your numbers. <laughs> Yeah, so tomorrow is Friday. I wonder what's going to happen in the markets. It's so weird because I'm making YouTube videos and all that, but the more you look at the markets, the more you like overthink. And um, one of my like accounts, I have like so many trading accounts. It's like I moved to the US. I had zero dollars in my bank account moving there. I had zero credit. I basically like could only open like an E-Trade account. So I started with that. And then I moved from E-Trade to uh, Chase, JP Morgan. I opened an account there for brokerage. And then I opened Robinhood and I used Cash App. So I have four accounts in the US. But in my E-Trade, I don't really add money into it. I just leave it. But I don't even check the stocks that are in there. Like, I don't even, like I have, we'll name them. Like, I don't pay attention to the daily prices because I don't really, like, need to know. Because I've, I'm not trying to make a quick buck. So, and they're just stocks that you know. I have a uh, American plan, but I'm using, I'm in Canada, it slows down my phone. So just in my E-Trade, I have Apple, Palantir, PayPal, Roblox, Square, and Tesla. B bo boom, just a bunch of tech plays, but I don't even look at those. So with all this market drama right now, like honestly, I couldn't even tell you what the price of Tesla is right now. Like. 600 and it's it takes the stress out of 663 okay yeah like try not to look as much i look because i'm trying to make videos but um especially with tilray like oh it just makes you sick when you're seeing the stock move like it did today oh my god this week talk about a a terrible merger <laughs> this is like if you're at the ski mountain and they have like the green run the blue run the black run the double black this is like a double black it's so steep look at that and i think the more that we're all at home and we're just we've gotten used to just being on our phones and our devices more often and checking our stocks and like cnbc doesn't help they talk about things Oh no, did my camera break? Let's see. Sorry. I have to change the battery on my camera. Give me 20 seconds. Never thought I'd use the full battery. Okay, look at that. Sorry about that. Yeah, so you should yeah, fix this. It's crazy. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever live streamed before, but uh, it it's a lot. Like, there's like, I got like a computer here. I got a laptop here. I got two lights here. Um, I want to grab my camera and show you, but it's like, I, I feel like the wires are just going to knock everything over. 
mics. You have to get everything right in this program I'm using. It's, it's, it's a learning curve. So let me know if you have any uh, tips. I know someone said it was blurry. Um, I'm going to keep trying to improve the stream quality over time. And I want to create a good experience for you guys. But um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a learning curve. I like, I like tr learning new things, though. <laughs> And I mean, I wish I, and one day I'm going to have my own like room and like no interruptions. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I just have to get through this. This pandemic really like slowed down the, the way the border approves visas. So that's, that's my, I'll get there. Building a YouTube channel from my parents' dining room. If Telluride goes below ten dollars, I fear I'm going to do something silly like buy more instead. <laughs> Honestly, like I'll show you a story here. I don't know if anyone saw my video about me selling Til uh, Afria. Do they even? Sh oh, are they even going to have a quote anymore? I should have like taken a picture and just framed it. I don't know if this is the. This is Tilray. Oh, we might we might not ever have an Afria ticker. <laughs> well, if you want to check it out, I have a video. I'll show it, it, it. It's on my channel, like why I sold Afria. Just look it up. But um, I held Afria through like the worst times. <laughs> it was bad. Twenty twenty two years. Where is this two year chart? Okay. So it, it's funny, this thing was trading at, well, is this really it? I guess this is a US dollar. So this stock was trading like crazy. Like I had it, I had it around here. I started buying it around here and then I kept buying it like slowly. I'm like, this company is good, over, undervalued for sure. And they had some issues, but then they popped, just the entire market popped, wasn't just them. Then they popped again, then they dropped. And I was like, oh my God, this is a roller coaster ride. And when you're holding like for this long, this is a long time. That's like a year right there, 2019, 2020. And it just kept going. And I'm like, come on, we need something good. We need some kind of like news story to help the industry. And then boom, February 3rd. Then we know what happened here, March pandemic. And this stock was like 250. And I was like, oh my God, I could have sold for this. I could have sold for this. And I was so mad at myself. I'm like, what do I do? And Believe it or not, I just kept buying here, like slowly. And I wasn't buying much else. And as we all know here, this stuff was all, during this time, like everything was on sale. Like you could buy any stock in like over six months, you'd make good gains. And I just kept buying this stuff. I was like, am I gonna ruin like the next 10 years of my life? Cause I'm like buying this instead of buying Disney or buying like one of these recovery stocks. And then this all happened and it ended up being okay. So with Tilray, again, I didn't, I, I, I might've put in a little bit more money than I probably should have during these times. But with this, the lesson learned is I was a little stressed during these times and you don't want to be stressed. So with Tilray here, there's more competition now in the industry. There's more eyes on the U S companies. So be careful. I'd spread your bets. Don't just go Tilray. Put a couple other companies in that you like. Do some research, right? I'll try to provide some more videos on this topic. It's weird they YouTube doesn't like me making the videos on this topic. By the way, they like get they they flag your videos and stuff. By the way, but I try. That's why I always say green. If you ever hear me say green, I'm not talking about eco friendly. But um, I'll, uh, I'll catch up on the chat in a sec. But yeah, I'd say be prepared for anything. Be prepared that this stock goes down to like. <laughs> I'm probably looking at the wrong one again. No. Now look at the more short term chart. Yeah, just be prepared that this thing could like test these numbers again. Just you never know. So, just, yeah, I don't know. I I I I think this company could be great in a couple of years, but I'm not putting all my bets on this type of company again, like I did for Afria before. So <laughs> that's my advice. You just you don't want to live like that. The, the, and when your stock is down that much and you're like, the amount of money, I, it was like a down payment on a house. That's how much money I was, not down, but I could have had. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so I'm using um, Streamlabs. 
have OBS. So uh, it, my internet connection may be spotty, but yeah, if it's uh, good, I, I like it. I was using just OBS before, lots of glitching and stuff, but I think my computer was the problem at the time. Yeah, so I'm using a MacBook for the chat, but um, I was thinking about getting like an iPad or something eventually, but slowly doing these upgrades. Yeah, so you have 40 shares. See, that, the thing is, it's not too bad if 40 shares like... Um, it won't make or break you like over time. Like obviously if you have a, if you're employed or something, you keep bringing money in and you allocate that money in the best possible spots. So create yourself a portfolio that doesn't bounce around too much. Cause I think what sucks more than losing is knowing your portfolio was like way up and then you didn't sell and it went down. So it's uh, it, it, some people want to just hit home runs and I was kind of guilty of that with Afria. But again, the stock was at like $2, $3. And I was researching these stocks religiously. And I was like, this company's undervalued. Like they had like 700 million in cash or something. And they were valued at like 1.3 or 4 billion. I'm like, this makes no sense. Like they're bringing in a lot of sales. They have so much cash, which they use to buy sweet water and all that. But at the time it was undervalued. So Maybe till race right now, it's still not, I wouldn't call it undervalued. So that's a little bit of risk to keep in mind. So, um, and yeah, like the sales of the MSOs, it's going to scare off people. I think like if, if the MSO, I think Cure Relief could bring in like a billion dollars in sales soon per year, maybe not this year, but the next year, I don't know if Tilray is going to be bringing in a billion dollars in sales unless Europe starts popping and they start selling some goods in America, but that's people are going to, you're going to start seeing articles saying like Tilray is not a good investment. Go into MSO. So you need to be ready for anything. Like I would, some people can't even buy MSO stocks because they're on the OTC. So what I would do is E-Trade in America has um, OTC stocks. So look into those. Yeah, pretty fairly valued, if not a little highly valued. Yeah, it's, it's not that bad. 6.31 billion market cap. Um, I think they're projected to almost be a billion in sales, but I don't think they're quite there yet. So um, this was insane. <laughs> that was insane. But like compared to like Canopy Growth, I think CGC, They, I've, I don't keep it on this stock anymore. Yeah, 9 billion. They're not bringing in that many sales, to be honest. They just have like the... The investment from Constellation Brands, right? Which was a big deal. They got billions of dollars. And maybe that's the thing that Tilray doesn't have. And maybe that's the next thing they need to get done is sign up with a big company like Anheuser-Busch or a CPG brand like Procter & Gamble or a pharma brand, something big that will just be like, oh my God. Like if you get a company that all the CNBC people they love and they have a lot of credibility partners up with Tilray. That's going to be huge. Not saying that's going to happen because these companies might be wanting to partner up with the American companies. They're just waiting for America to be legal so they can do that legally. That's the kind of the risk, right? You can't assume like a big deal like that is going to happen. And then we have the cigarette companies. Cigarette companies are trying to change their way they generate revenue. They don't want to be a company that um sells products that are gonna get banned or they kill their customers um, not a very good business model to sell a product that kills your customer so um yeah we'll see j and j let's do it j and j <laughs> that would be uh that'd be great so there's lots there's lots of potential catalysts ahead and there's a lot of things that are gonna happen we just don't know if it's gonna be a positive on just tilray a positive on other companies besides tilray or just the market in general. So we know there's a lot of retail in Tilray and this if, if retail investors start seeing like a bump in Tilray, the FOMO kicks in. This is a stock where people have FOMO. And if this returns to like these levels, like 24, 25, like I, I would probably sell a little bit. I'd probably take some profits personally, but 
Who knows at the time? We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. If things are looking good and the U.S. market is opening up, maybe that's a different story. So, yeah, just my two cents on Tilray. Any other company, any other, like, videos you guys are interested in, like, that I could make? So I always want to make videos that people want to see, right? So if you, I'll do a quick shout-out on a book. This book is uh, really good. It's called The Psychology of Money. This is a book. If you're not a big reader, I don't read that many books, but every once in a while I come across a book that like I can read. Like I read like half of it in the first sitting and then I read like the other half and like a couple more sittings. This will teach you a ton about just like your mind and what you need to do to be able to be a successful investor. I guarantee if you buy this book on Amazon, you'll probably like make your money back in just like knowledge and um I really, I'm going to read it again. Like I read it once. I'm probably going to read it like two or three more times. And I trust me, I've never said that about a book. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. I would check out this one psychology of money. Look it up on Amazon. It kind of just changed my like mentality. Maybe I'll make a video about it. I should have highlighted some parts of this book. I was just in bed when I read it. So I didn't want to like highlight anything that will be on the second reading. Where did I save some parts? Anyways, I'll, I didn't prepare for that part. Let's talk about that enough. What's the biggest thing I could think of? I tried to save some, but I uh, unfolded my pages here. I think like compounding interest. So compounding interest is just as your interest goes up and as uh, your portfolio gets larger, it just keeps growing faster. And the second you interrupt that, um, it's not good. Like you take money out when you shouldn't, you're messing up with that compounding interest and compounding interest is one of the most powerful things in investing. So that's why I invest in like Vanguard VFV because I know that, that that's just gonna be there kind of growing for me over time. So. I don't know, like you can't, like this chart, you cannot, I know it's boring, it's an ETF, blah, blah, blah. You're not gonna get like a thousand percent in like a couple of years or whatever, but as you get older and your portfolio starts to get larger, you don't wanna see it just dip 50%. So say you have like, I don't know, a couple of hundred grand. Like, do you wanna just lose half of that? No, you wanna put money in where um, it won't just disappear. So you slowly keep adding the same amount to this type of ETF over time. And it'll start compounding. And then you have this like nice nest egg. And at the same time, you could go into your individual stocks. So that's kind of my mentality. I just try to, this is the part of the investing I don't think about. I just know I'm just going to keep putting money in here. And then hopefully some of my other bets pay off. And then there we go. I should be, okay. So someone told me to be an Amazon affiliate when I had like five, like 10 subscribers. They're like, you should capitalize on your, uh, <laughs> you should capitalize on your following and start making money off Amazon affiliates. So I put affiliate links in my, uh, my every video. And then Amazon emailed me. They're like, Oh, uh, you haven't made a single sale in 90 days. And if you don't make another say, if you don't make a single sale in the next 30 days, we're taking you out of the program. <laughs> and since then I haven't like added it back. I think I could make another account, but yeah, if you're a new YouTuber, advice don't like put affiliate links in just yet but maybe i should i'll, I'll start i'll see if i can uh make an affiliate link for the, this and i'll put it back um yeah i saw a uh, kick it with dang he arrived where is he there he is what's up just checking in to say hi thanks for a recommendation so kick it with dang he has the best um shoe advice so if you want and style advice so check out his channel i've i've known kick it with dang since we were both at like a hundred subs or something like we've, we've, uh, we've been on YouTube for about the same amount of time since like April, 2020. Yeah. 2020. That's when I started at least. Yeah, I guess I could, well, I, I clicked the links, the affiliate links, but they were like, you didn't make a purchase. Like no one made a purchase. Um, but yeah, I, I, the way I did it was I had my camera gear, um, like I was like, this is the camera I use. This is the t computer I use. And like, I don't know. I, I did it wrong. So maybe I'll, I'll talk about the book and I'll have the link down below. I'll, I would put it in now, but I have to reset up my account. 
yeah thanks man you're gonna get there just keep making that content your uh your style stuff is good like i love your advice and you it's super easy to digest time is it i lost track i've been in this like vortex oh what have i been going for like two hours wow if anyone wants to like the video or if you want if you don't know me and you want to sub hit that button as well i'll i'll i'll, I'll do that plug any other sectors you've been investing in um let's see here i've been buying like i bought a canadian bank I talked about JP Morgan already. Just banking, just I want more stability. So Bank of uh, JP Morgan and Bank of Nova Scotia, which is a Canadian bank, but it does trade on the New York Stock Exchange. So um, I just recently jumped in on this one. So it's not, it's like I bought it at like, what, what is it now? I think I bought it at like 58 and now it's 65. So and I don't really have too much in there. Um, what else do I have here? What are people's thoughts on this whole genomics thing? Like, I think, I don't really know too much about it. I don't really invest in them, but I know like Kathy Wood is big on genomics and Kathy Wood is just kind of going through a little bit of a hard time right now. <laughs> I think she'll bounce back, but she does make some questionable picks. Oh, here's, this is, this is a good one to talk about. Coinbase. Um, oh, Jessica Estrada, what's up? I'm not single if you're talking to me. Unless people are connecting in the comments there. Fidelity. Oh, FXAIX index. So that, I'm assuming it kind of tracks the, uh, for the S&P 500. Yeah, like stuff like this is just a smart move, right? Like you need some like, you need a foundation in your portfolio, right? You can't just have everything that's like crazy and bounces around. You just need some things that are just kind of, and the beauty about ETFs is they they move, they change. They do all the moving for you and they got experts doing it. It does not give you like a 30% gain in a year usually, but that's okay. As long as it's a it's a good alternative to just putting your money into like a savings account which pays you pretty much nothing. <laughs> biotech, yeah, biotech is huge for sure and uh the technology there is just going to keep getting crazier. And they say like the way they developed the vaccine, I, I personally haven't been vaccinated because we don't have any vaccines in uh, Canada yet for my age group. But the, they say the way they created a vaccine that quickly was like not even possible a couple of years ago. So it's crazy. I know there's been some issues with the vaccine, so I'm not going to um, get too deep on that. Yeah, CRISPR, that's one of Kathy Wood's top picks. I don't know too much about that one either. But yeah, I wanted to discuss Coinbase. So is anyone here on Coinbase? Um, Cause I, I, I'll, I'll admit it. I bought a bit of Coinbase and it was like a one day thing. I, I sold it, I bought, I don't know. I can't remember how many shares, like 20 or something. And I sold like most of them, like for a slight gain and the rest dropped. And I was like, oh my God, but my friend, one of my friends is talking about, I think he's in the chat, Andrew. I don't know if he's here still. Okay, perfect. Kick it with Dang. Is Coinbase hard to like get your money? Like, is it like, I've heard these stories on Reddit. So Reddit, I've heard there's issues like you can't access your money or something. Like, I, I don't know. Like, please unlock my account. I'm on the verge of being homeless. I have 1K in my portfolio. need to withdraw some money to compete complete my rent already. Like this is kind of a, I wouldn't like put money in that you should be using for rent. But anyways, um, you've locked my account for no reason. My ID was verified. I was able to make small purchase, blah, blah, blah. But he's locked out of his account. And I'm wondering, is this a thing? I know and Andrew loves this topic. Like, <laughs> but is that, am I still here? Yeah. So, People are just saying like their transfers take a while. They they issue like a time ticket to get their issue solved and like they don't get responses. And like, I don't know, like, I don't know if people are talking about this. They can't buy anything. Like, 
I personally don't use Coinbase to buy crypto. I use like Cash App and Robinhood, but I don't even really buy it currently. Um, get your coins off Coinbase if you can. So like this thing IPO'd. Well, yeah, Coinbase Pro, I heard it's better and they, they, they're, they're, uh, they help you get your access to your money better, but let's see. Kick it with Dang. I check it very casually every few weeks. No problems with any tracks. Yes, it's good. So yeah, I don't know. Like I, I take this stuff with a grain of salt for sure because I thought this Coinbase Reddit page would be more about like the platform, but it just seems like it's a complaint page. Like you don't see too much on here. And considering they have like 122,000 members and then the interactions are only like getting like 20 comments. 94 is a lot, I guess. Uh, 14, like it's not that much engagement, right? So maybe you take this stuff with a grain of salt. For a $100 billion company, your service is shit. I don't know. If but I don't know. Is That thing was pretty hyped on YouTube and I fell into that. I was like, oh, this thing's going to be a quick double. Like we're all going to make money. And I think a lot of people, a lot of the big YouTubers too, like they, they put, put a ton of money in, like <laughs> insane. So um, I don't know. I don't know what this is going to turn into. I know Kathy Wood is like invested in this. It's one of her like top 20 holdings. Um, yeah, I don't know. Never had an issue with Coinbase. So yeah, like, so yeah, like it seems like a lot of people are fine. It's like, it's like a couple, uh, couple complaints here. So yeah, I just wanted to, I saw this the other day. I was like, oh, this is an interesting thing to bring up. And I like to see all angles of everything, right? I think it's, uh, oh, big YouTubers are making money off referrals. I see a lot of YouTubers talking about like Weeble all the time. And uh, like, r r like obviously the Robin Hood was a big thing a couple years ago. Everyone was talking about Robin Hood. I haven't got into that. I don't know. I'm not really trying to like... Like I'll recommend trading platforms, I guess, but maybe I haven't like thought about like putting, getting my like sign up code. Maybe I should, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like I've, I've even read up that like a lot of YouTubers right now are getting paid. Yeah, maybe I'll look into it, but I heard a lot of YouTubers are getting paid to like pump stocks that are bad and that's like, uh, I don't know. Like I had one person reach out to me. I'm not gonna, ex I'm not gonna explain what the company was or anything. But people reach out to you if you have a channel, and like someone was like, "Can you promote this stock?" And I'm like, "I can't." Like, and I get it in the comments sometimes. I'm like, I'm not gonna. I just feel weird about like promoting something like that. It just seems shady. So. And I don't know, there's weird, I think the laws will change behind that one behind where um, people getting paid to pump a stock just because they're being paid to do it or it just seems like a bad idea. And I, I kind of hope that this whole YouTube thing doesn't, <laughs> what if it becomes not even legal one day to like even talk about stocks online because there's like a class action lawsuit or something like, I don't know, I kind of, I don't like, I don't like hearing that those things are going on. And that's why when you're on YouTube, like try not to, trust everything you see and like even for me like i can like sometimes when i'm making a video i'm like i could explain this video i could explain this stock for an hour like i could find so many more things to talk about it but it's like i'm not gonna make a video on a stock an hour every time like it's i try to do the uh what i think are important things to talk about at that time so and that these things are always changing i make a video about a stock and a week later there's more news to talk about so yeah, when you're watching any videos online and content, just know that there's some kind of shady things going on. So if a stock is super hyped, like these stocks that are like 20X in like a day or whatever, 20X in like a month, just be careful because you don't know if there's something happening behind the scenes that you don't, like you're getting taken advantage of, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I don't think they're gonna ban. And same with YouTube, like their highest. I don't know if you guys know about YouTube, but they pay like ads, um, like they pay ad revenue to the creator, and it's based on what topics you're talking about. So if you're talking about personal finance and money, um, those are the highest like CPMs they call it. But if you're t if you're like a YouTuber that's like a minimalist, where it's like 
my channel is about not spending money. Don't buy anything. Just have the same t-shirt every day and don't decorate your room, blah, 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 all that stuff. You know, you know minimalist. Believe it or not, they have the lowest, one of the lowest CT CPMs in YouTube because you're literally telling people not to spend money. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so some of those YouTubers, like the minimalist ones that are like really big, they're not making as much money on ad revenue. They're making it on other things, other sources, but um, it's pretty interesting, like learning about how this all works behind the scenes. And this was a cool Netflix. So some people are saying that Netflix is going to lose to YouTube. So YouTube has higher engagement. I was listening to a podcast and a guy was saying like, I hope this is a new one. No, that's 2020. We don't want that. Netflix. So some people are saying that uh, YouTube itself is going to be bigger than Netflix. And the thing about YouTube is they weren't really, ref Google wasn't really sharing too much about their revenues on um, on their earnings reports. And until this recent quarter, they gave us a little more information on their YouTube business. And it showed that YouTube is absolutely crushing it for them. Like it's insane. And one person, I was listening to a podcast and they said, YouTube, the amount of engagement on the platform, like you guys are watching me talk and you guys are all chatting there. That engagement is valuable. Netflix, you press play and you just watch. There's no like engagement. Like, and I'm, this, I'm really bullish on YouTube. Some people thought YouTube's dead, but um, YouTube's just gonna keep growing in my opinion. I'm not, I'm trying to, uh, yeah, I'm a little biased, I guess, but that's why I think even Google is a nice investment and I don't have Google as an individual stock. I have Google in my uh, index funds or ETFs. So I, I think Google is just a juggernaut. Yeah, YouTube's more authentic. But it's weird because as a guy that watches so much YouTube and like, is on YouTube, people that I know that aren't on YouTube, they just, they don't get it. Like what's on YouTube? Like what, YouTube, that, isn't that like where like cat videos are? Like a lot of people have even discovered the, what really YouTube has turned into. Matt Core has got a Manscaped sponsorship, pretty crazy. Yeah, the ads on YouTube are really geared towards the video. So it's like, it, it, it's about the topic you're talking about, right? So. Yeah, Netflix's production numbers, like the amount they spend on production. Yeah, it's different. It's different. It go it, the way I see it, it goes back to attention. So, YouTube, it, there's only 24 hours in a day, and where are you going to spend your 24 hours? Some of it's going to be sleeping, and then some of it is going to be on screens. Some of it's working, of course. And if YouTube captures the attention away from Netflix, does that hurt Netflix? I don't know. If people aren't canceling Netflix, then maybe it doesn't hurt them. Yeah, kick it with Ding. I agree. If if you make videos too, you like you watch other videos to study. I'm gonna catch up on the uh, comments here. Let's talk stock market manipulation. Yeah, I got off topic here. We got we we're here for stocks. <laughs> High tide is being held down. Is this being investigated? It's hard, it's hard to like prove like the manipulation and like it sucks because some of the big money, they control some of these stock prices, like especially the small ones. Um, when, a, when a stock isn't like, when a stock isn't like owned by that many institutions, it can be kind of moved around a lot. So let's see, holders, check my screen. So yeah, it's, it, it's, this stock high tide is not held by many institutions. Like this is like pretty small. So when a company isn't held by like big money, yeah, yeah the, the car salesman that goes back to the earlier in the call or the, the video, but yeah. So when a company isn't held by that many institutions, like it could be, they could, they can manipulate it more easily, I think. So that's why you don't see the, the big, big stocks. They don't like just bounce so much. Right. So. Um, that's something to think about. So yeah, this company could be manipulated and maybe the big money is trying to hold it down until um, 
until like they can enter the U.S. and then they could jump in and buy the stock then. I don't know. But again, it's kind of like conspiracy at this. You can't really prove anything, so you don't really know for sure. So. But yeah, some people are thinking like the entire market right now is being held down by like weird manipulation, like all the tech stocks and stuff that we're all waiting for to boom again. I don't know. It's hard to say. I think a lot of money rotated into like the classic names, right? Like this company's killing it. This company is slaughtering it. Look at that thing. Wow. 253 in March to 337. For a company like this big and this established, that's insane growth, right? Like, And that's why a lot of people are saying the money is moving away from like the tech and like the growth, right? Into like these ones, so. But yeah, there's always manipulation. The hedge funds have a lot of power. They have the capital to really like move the market around, right? One stock I heard about is it, no one, no one's probably heard about this one. Like it's like not, sometimes you hear about these stocks. You're like, what, what is this? Restoration hardware. It's like a luxury home brand. I'm from Canada, so I'm not, I didn't know about this company as much, but look at their stock in one year, 156 to 684 like that is insane and people are saying like this company is going to be double the market cap 30 billion to i don't know 1500 a share or like 1300 a share and i bet you many of you didn't even know about this stock i don't know i didn't know about it was anyone did anyone know this stock existed and the bet on this one is the fact that um people have like moved out of the cities into houses and People have bought houses and the housing market is just going insane right now. And there's, if the people can spend this much money on housing, then they have a lot of money to spend on their interiors as well, right? So obviously this is like a, it's like most of, I go to Ikea or whatever. Like I don't go to like these type of stores, but apparently the luxury home good stuff is booming right now. So um, yeah, I've been, I've been keeping an eye on this stock. I'm like, oh, should I buy some? Like it's. Its valuation is 14 billion, but they, uh, yeah, add this one to your watch list. Cause it's like, it's, it's gone up a lot recently, but yeah, you know, the high says 800, which is maybe they need some, I would wait, may wait for an earnings call, but yeah, I'm keeping an eye on this one. If it dips, maybe I'll buy it. I think CNBC has been talking about this. Apparently they're opening like restaurants. They're not trying to be like just a, a brand. We think RH might have the DNA of a multi-bagger. See, Sometimes this, this just this goes back to Playboy. The stock like it went up so much, and like no one really was talking about it. So like sometimes you need to look beyond like what's going on on the hype plays. But I need I might make a video about this one. We'll see. I think they're they've opened like a flagship location. Flagship. New York. They're trying to be like the Louis Vuitton of like, look at this store. They're trying to be like the Louis Vuitton of like home goods. Look at that thing. <laughs> and they have like restaurants and stuff. They have a couple of restaurants around the world. They're trying to like really become this like, and obviously in the restaurants they're using their products to decorate. I don't know. I just found this an interesting company. It's a, it's a, it, it's a different type of play that you can diversify a little bit more in your portfolio. But yeah, so Wayfair is a publicly traded company. And they've been doing, I think, pretty well, but, oh, maybe not. The The thing I don't, I'm worried about for Wayfair is their products are similar to what Amazon sells on their website. So I'm what, I always worry, like, Amazon's like the king of convenience. Um, so can Amazon beat them at their own game and just make, they have, Amazon has their own line of, like, furniture, believe it or not. They don't call it Amazon Basics. They created these, like, fancy names and stuff. And I think the quality on Wayfair, I bought a couple things. It's not that good. There's obviously like a range of products on there, but like, yeah, the stuff on Amazon, like I feel like that's their biggest um, 
threat as a company. But yeah, $29 billion market cap, massive. That's double the restoration hardware. Yeah, so real estate, yeah. That's the thing, like real estate's gone up a lot and we've had an increase in real estate for like the last decade pretty much in, in certain markets for sure. And it's getting to the point, I'm in Vancouver and this is one of the hottest real estate markets in, in the world. And the mentality in Vancouver is the fact that real estate will never crash. Like, oh, it only goes up. And it kind of goes into the stock market. It's like, oh, this will only go up. And you never know. Never say never say it'll never crash. Like people, if they raise interest rates and people's mortgage rates have to go up a little bit and they're spending way too much of their take home pay on living and housing and then maybe they're not they're not living a happier life because they spend all their money on their house instead of going on vacation or even buying things in the economy. If you're spending all your money on living and you can't go buy a, a new couch or a new anything because you you have no money, is that bad for the economy? Because consumption, the consumer is what makes the American economy like powerful. So what if housing becomes unaffordable and the rest of the economy gets hurt by it. And it's kind of like, it's it's all connected. And I think economics and all that stuff is super, uh, super interesting because it's never like one thing. And that's another thing I learned in this book. I'll give a plug back to the book. Um, it's never like one thing and you don't know what's coming next. And the reason you look back at all the old market crashes, it's all things that came out of the blue. And you just need to be prepared for that. And that's one thing I really learned in this book is there's always going to be another event that people are just off, caught off guard, right? And when these events coming, he did a good story about an alien. He's like, an alien came to visit Earth in 2007. And in 2007, in the economy in the US, everything was going well. He's like, oh, okay, this... This is how this uh, pop, the humans, they buy stuff and they work and stuff. And then in 2008, he looked around, everything looked the same. And I don't know, I, I got to remember the exact part, but he said that the, percep the economy is based on perception. So even though nothing really changed in the economy, like, I, I, I'm not saying it right. I'm not saying it right. I gotta, I'm not going to be able to find the part. But when, 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 People are scared and things aren't going well. People will try not to spend just like the economy, right? Uh, just like the pandemic. So you got to be prepared for a black swan event that causes people not to want to spend. And then that kind of hurts the economy and then everything's connected and just be prepared for the unknown when you're investing. And that means hold cash a little bit. And cash has been right now has been don't hold cash. You're losing money it takes a lot to hold cash for a long time. Like say you have to hold, say you built a cash position for 10 years, but maybe in that 10th year of holding something really bad happens and you have that cash that will get you a huge return on investment. Right. That was another thing I learned in the book. I need, I should have prepared more to share some things about this book. So yeah, I recommend that book. It'll get you thinking and it'll, it'll, it'll get you in the mentality to always be prepared for stuff that most people aren't prepared for. <clears throat> yep, so NFTs, I'm not the most uh, well-versed in, but I think it's very interesting. And people want to, people want to like, it's collectibles, right? And And... People want to have something that's like original and unique, right? One thing that kind of worries me is like, is there going to be like too many NFTs? Is there going to be like too many? It's like supply and demand. Like, is there going to be? One guy made a made a good point on the fact that um, one day you're going to buy an NFT from like an artist, and then you're going to go into your virtual house with your VR, and then you're going to do a tour with your friends of your virtual house. And then on the wall, you're going to have your nyan cat picture. That's you only have. And then and you can open a museum in the, in the, in the VR world and you could charge people to come see your NFT collection. I'm like, wow, that can you imagine that's like what our life is like soon? I don't know. <laughs> 
Yeah, I saw that. That was crazy. Um, this guy's art is interesting. People. I'll just look on YouTube. I don't have sound. I'm not going to play sound, but. Oops, NFL. Yeah, this guy. So this guy sells. Um, <laughs> he sold his like whole one of his whole collections of like art, and it was like sixty nine million or something. Some guy bought all his art, like the digital versions of his art, for sixty nine million, and it's insane. This guy's like a random artist. Um, he didn't really make much money doing it, and then he just made this huge amount of <laughs> amount of money by selling his art in like a digital. This thing was cool when I saw this. Yeah, it has like a slideshow on there like super super interesting and then jack dorsey sold his uh first tweet 22.5 million nine cat six hundred thousand six hundred thousand dollars this stuff's crazy yeah meme artists <laughs> i think this stuff is super cool i think it's still very new so just keep an eye on it i don't know too much about investing in it yet i don't know where to invest in it but um, I find it like entertaining and very interesting to read about because no one ever can predict the future, right? Like we all think like, oh, in 10 years, like this is going to happen. Flying cars. No one gets it right. So none of us can imagine what's going to happen. And in, uh, Facebook, for example, 20% of their workforce right now, this is a mega company that brings in billions of dollars in ad revenue. But 20% of the workforce now is dedicated to VR and AR. So augmented reality and virtual reality. And what does that tell you? Does that tell you that something big is going to be happening to that space? Is, is are our lives going to change in a couple of years because of like the advancements of that technology? They say in, in, in cars, having uh, like augmented reality, like having like more information pop up in front of you when you're driving, like to tell you when to turn and stuff. That stuff's going to get really advanced. Apple is reportedly working on something with a VR headset. So that's why I kind of like, I've, I've been looking at Apple as an investment. Just I've been slowly putting money in there. I think it's a good company. It's kind of a couple trillion dollar valuation, kind of insane. And Facebook, Facebook is just printing money, printing money. Um, Facebook. This company, I think, like it needs, it, it should be higher valued considering how much money they have, like, and they're bringing in. So I think Facebook is an interesting investment. People might think, oh, it's you missed your chance. It's like it's not going to grow that much. I don't know. We're in, we're in the beginning of the internet age. Unless some regulations come to like slow down these tech companies from being super power, powerful. These companies are just going to keep bringing in money. All Facebook has to do is like adjust their algorithm a tiny bit. Oh, record earnings again. Add like a couple more ads here and there. <laughs> I've, and then, they, yeah, this whole VR thing, like we don't even know what it's going to be. And the stuff that they're working on is like, I listened to an interview. Next time I'll have sound for this, but if you guys want to see an interesting interview, it's only 19 minutes. He talks about the fact that he, they're creating like a sixth sense or a, yeah, sixth sense in, in VR. So in the real world here, we have smell, we have feet, we have all the senses, but apparently they're creating something where if you're in the VR world and you put your hand near something, it'll like vibrate your hand without touching it. And it's called like it'll be like 3d touch. So you can like kind of interact with things without actually touching it. And like, I can't quite grasp it. This video will tell you, let you learn a little bit more about that. But these guys are talking about some crazy things. Um, like Facebook is like doing some secret stuff right now. Maybe it's going to be bad for the world. Who knows? But I think Facebook's trying to turn around their image and they're trying to not be so reliant on advertising revenue. And I don't know. I just think this company is going to keep they have so much money to like try new product projects out. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think Facebook's always a decent play, decent investment. Can't really buy too many shares of it at a time, obviously, but um, it's just one of those solid companies that 
Yeah. Let's see what we got here in the chat. <laughs> VR dating would be weird, right? Like Bumble, like what if they innovate? I know Bumble IPO, I don't know if there's too much hype around there. I don't understand how Facebook makes money. I haven't spent a dime on it or even clicked it. Do you use uh, WhatsApp or, or Instagram even? And you don't, I don't know if you have even have to click the ads to like, like I don't know if you have to click the ads for the transaction to happen. Like they're probably making money off just like you zooming by the ad. Yeah, like I think Facebook does shady stuff with people's information and they try to just get away with it. So, okay. So yeah, Facebook, like m a lot of their users are making money off of, right? So sometimes you'll see things on like your feed on Facebook that you're not like subscribed to, so, like, but you just see it and like, how'd that get there? It's because they wanted to show it to you. So like, I don't know, the, their algorithm's like super complex and it's like designed to just make them more and more money. Yeah, that's what you get. You're, oh, it's a free service. <laughs> it's not free. You're uh, trading your product, and then the Apple. The, the the there is a risk with Facebook on Apple. Like Apple is now. Um, it's like there's a huge battle. Zuckerberg versus uh, Zuckerberg versus Tim Cook or Tim Apple. Yeah, this stuff's interesting. Two mega tech companies, super powerful, super influential companies are like fighting each other. It's basically the reason why Facebook is so powerful is they use data to target people. And Apple's new uh, iOS upgrade is like not making it as easy for uh, Facebook to like get this data and give you ads that you, they want you to see. So we'll see. We'll see how that one plays out. Um, but I think that's why Facebook's trying to go into other businesses like VR and AR just to kind of like not be so reliant on like the advertising model. Sometimes, yeah, like sometimes you like think of something and then you get an ad for it. You're like, what? Is, how do they know? <laughs> but they know. Yeah, that's what you get for a free service. Would you guys invest in Robinhood? I don't want to sound like a like a bad person, but a part of me thinks like Robinhood might end up being like maybe not in the first year. I don't, I'd probably not buy it in the first year, but part of me thinks that they'll end up being like a good investment. But I don't know. You can't get away with those scandals, the things that they're doing when you're a publicly traded company. So they'll have to stop doing that stuff. That's why I like to keep an eye on what they're doing, but. They're making investing more accessible to lots of people and millions of people started investing recently. And as much as like, there's going to be people that lose money. I think it's overall good that more people are, are uh, getting in the market and learning about the market. And a lot of people, it even is a gateway to get people in and then they go to a new platform, but The uh, Apple upgrade on what? Their iPads, their computers, their uh, M1, their iOS. Like they, they have so, Apple's like become, the, like everything they do, they're just doing it so well. It's crazy, right? Like that, uh, I saw a video, I can't remember who it was, but he was saying like Apple versus Microsoft, which one's a better buy? And he was saying how like Apple's too reliant on the iPhone. And it's like, Microsoft has so many things. They have Microsoft Office, they have Xbox, they have all these things. Like, sure, they do. But Apple, like, they've got you. <laughs> like, I've got a MacBook, i got a Mac Mini, got an iPhone, got a watch. <laughs> what else do I need? Um, and their iPhone revenue is big right now, of course. It's like $47 billion or something last quarter, I think. But their other things are growing. So, I don't know. My, like they're both great companies. They're both great companies. You got their new iPad. I saw their new iPad Pro. I'm like, oh, I kind of want it. <laughs> I kind of want it. So that's the thing. They're really good at marketing. They're really good at making you want to upgrade. And I got the Mac, like my MacBook Pro from the 2018, it like could not handle live streams. Like it was like brutal. 
Um, but now I'm on the Mac Mini, which is it's not even heating up right now. This is my first time really trying it. It's great. Like, it's smooth. I hope this live stream is really good for you right now. But I heard, I don't know, it might be my internet if there is any issues. But, um, yeah, super happy with this so far. So, yeah, I, I, I bought Apple at, like, 119 when it dipped a couple months ago or a month ago. Super happy. I'm just good. And you know all the big money buys Apple, right? All every index fund, like a lot of them have Apple, so it's just Warren Buffett actually said I want let's see. So Warren Buffett sold Apple and it was like, Oh my god, he sold Apple. Is Apple done? Um but then there was a quote here, yeah. Selling Apple stock, probably a mistake, admits Warren Buffett. So See, <laughs> we all make mistakes investing, right? As long as you admit them to yourself, um, that's fine, right? No one's a perfect investor. And yeah, they owned they owned five point. I thought I think they owned more before, but five point four percent of all of Apple. That's insane. Berkshire Hathaway. I am exposed to Berkshire Hathaway in index funds, but I don't have any individual shares. Oh, this book, it talks about. There was actually three founders for Berkshire Hathaway. Um, like obviously uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. There's another guy. He actually had to sell. He actually had to sell a part of his. Uh, he had to sell a portion of his stake in Berkshire Hathaway, like a lot of it because he needed the money. And that's an example of like, you can't set yourself up to need to sell a stock when it's down. So he sold he, a big stake in Berkshire Hathaway, I think pretty much all of it. And he, look what happened to the stock. So this stock, even in the 90s, $91 a share. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Everyone probably knows this. I'm just gonna go on Google here. I mean, yeah. Okay, so is that gonna work? I'm on like every trading platform at the same time. I just need to like I'm gonna go back to Apple. This one's easy, hard to read. So yeah, back in the day, like this stock was like, I think it was in the eighties. The guy had to sell his like stake in this company. And imagine you sold your stake in this company because you had no other choice. You had to get rid of this stock to live at that current moment. But look how high this stock went. Four, $435,000 per share. And this guy sold it around these numbers. Could you imagine? Oh my God. 114,000%. <laughs> Oh my God, that's crazy. Cause, cause he had to, he had no choice. So yeah, um, make sure you're prepared for anything. Any of those random black swan events that comes, which will come again, there's going to be something that happens. Um, yeah, like be ready. Cause you don't want to sell for something that you know is, could be bigger in 10 years. And these guys think long-term, like think about how long this was. This is 20 years just to get up to, Actually, that's a lot, 64,000 a share. So yeah, just a lesson learned there. Be prepared. I'm, I'm trying to save up some cash right now, just in case. I could see the market continuing to slowly bleed. I don't want it to, but if it does, it does. I might have to call it a day here soon here. Oh, 1029. Anyone else want to cover anything else before I go? I'll probably call it off in five minutes here. Is anyone here new to the channel? Like, did you just find me today? Or, um, or you guys seen me before? Or you found me recently or something? I'm always interested to see how people found my uh, videos or channel.
Yeah, thanks for being in the chat. Really, it's really awesome to have you. You're uh, you're super involved in the conversation. You really help some of these topics uh, get discussed. Yeah, thanks for the stream. Oh wow! So you found me with a Tilray video, I guess. So I've been making a couple Tilray videos as of late. I think next week I'm lined up to make a Roblox video, and maybe I'll make a Tilray. Oh, pff, I'll probably make a Tilray earnings reaction video. Those two things are on the same day, so. Um, they won't be like super edited. I'll just try to talk and get get all that. Some of my videos are like very edited, and some of my videos are like more of like I just need to get this information out. So I'll do a mix. You'll see a mix from both of me. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. I'll probably end up cutting this off now, unless anyone else has any other questions. So yeah. Next week, Tilray, Roblox. This week, I'll try to make one more video. I don't know what it's gonna be about yet. Thanks, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's awesome. Uh, I, I just love talking about this stuff and I read about it all day, but yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna call it off and get some rest for work tomorrow, so. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Hope to see you soon.